Welcome everybody to the 2023 Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee any percent no mount skips tournament. It's the final round or it's the final match of round three before we start getting into round four very shortly here. So we are in for one final exciting race. I'm Thomas Patrick WX, aka T Pet, and I'm joined alongside Dynam. Dynam. How's it going? What are you looking forward to in this final match around three? Oh, I am so hyped for this. This is gonna be this is gonna be a very solid match between three of our lower bracket runners, who uh, two of which have dropped from the upper bracket, and one of which has been grinding out the game, getting really good personal bests, really good tournament times. I'm really excited to see how this one shapes up, T Pat. Yeah, it's definitely not impossible to make it through the lower bracket. In fact, we had two players this round continue their journey in Spider and Fury, who have also advanced to round four via working their way through the lower bracket. So we'll see if Vermillion is able to do that. But let's introduce our runners here. First up, our pot one runner is Iron representing the Pika crew here. Their best time is a 310. Uh, they fell out of the upper bracket in the previous round. Same with our pot two runner, Kid Rocker, also has a personal best in the 310. So our first two seeds look to be the two favorites here. Again, winning, um, winning their first round match and then dropping down in round two. So we'll see if they can make it now to round four. Vermilion, meanwhile, has been improving fast. You see that the fastest tournament time is also their best time. So it is very much possible that they could improve once again and prove to have another upset. That which we've had a lot of this round. In fact, only two pot one runners this round have won their match and of this of course is win and advance and it's the elimination round since we are in the lower brackets here by the way i just want to mention that in this round round three this is the ninth match that we've seen and this is the final one here the first eight four have been won by pikachu four have been won oh, by ho, ho, ho. it's the tie and break round yeah, and if Iron is able to win, this will be the first round where Pikachu has more wins than Eevee. So a lot uh, weighing on his shoulders, maybe. Non-biased commentary, but Iron, you gotta do it for the Pika runners. <laughs> As a Pika runner myself, who does not own Eevee, do it for the fans. Yeah, non-biased commentary myself, but uh, <laughs> I would be okay with Iron winning because uh, if you look at the upper bracket, there's already two Eevee runners who have advanced to that first semifinal. But we'll discuss more on that uh, throughout the run here. They have just started, so... Uh, yeah, Dynam, do you think that any of these runners will choose backups, or do you think we're just going to see them run with it? We've kind of had a mix back and forth uh, throughout this tournament of people just kind of yoloing, dealing with minus attack. Do you think any of these guys might also do that? I feel like that's always an option. I know some people are more versed in running minus attack, minus special attack, minus speed, depending on your, your version of choice, uh, just because they've run it a bunch of times, perhaps, and know how to roll the punches, so to speak. And others might just decide to take the 40 second time loss at the beginning, just to sort of secure that uh, those those ranges, those those headbutts, those zippy zaps, those thunderbolts uh, on the end. So, not entirely sure. We'll have to see what happens in the next, uh, I believe, four minutes or so when they enter the lab, get their starter, check their stats, possibly run without checking their stats. But we'll just have to see what happens, Pat. It's such an interesting dynamic, especially once we get to about the halfway point in this tournament where you're thinking like, oh, 40 seconds could be like a hefty time loss. So maybe just don't even check your stats at all and just go for it and be like, I'm not resetting. Or it could be the other way around where you're thinking, man, if I get minus attack at this stage against two other equally matched runners, right? you kind of never know. And I keep going back and forth in my own mind when it comes to, oh, am I going to do this in the next round? Or am I just going to full on YOLO and, and deal with the consequences later? Exactly. Uh, one one difference between the three runners, Iron picking the, the Fabled Girl 4, I believe, if this is correct. Girl 3 or Girl 4, I can't really quite tell. 
that vermilion picking boy one kid rocker picking that boy looks one like a girl three that looks like a girl three to me a uh, very solid girl three canon is, hype it, it is the canon um I, I will point out that uh in my race it was super hype that that amber headstrong and i or amber and uh triv and i all went for girl three so no matter what girl girl wins. three wins girl three wins. wins it's canon i cannot interfere I, I know iron's running pika but like girl three hut is pretty hype this is true <laughs> we are coming right, up getting... on our starter catch uh Eevee will be able to not be able to determine what their starter nature is just off of this catch alone, whereas Iron will kind of have an inkling of which way this Pika is going to shift. Pika's uh, combat points, CP, uh, can either be 26 or 27 here. 26 for Iron is going to denote a non-neutral nature. Oh, Not a great, but you know, hey. still works. You know, also we having a little have... bit of a motion control moment there. Yeah, this is a great moment to almost get three different examples of how the motion control of this game can work. Uh, of course, if this is your first time watching Let's Go, uh, that catch screen kind of looked familiar if you've ever played Pokemon Go. This game, of course, Let's Go playing off of that to get a lot of the uh, hype kind of back onto the console side of things. So you use the Joy-Con motion controls to physically catch and throw the Pokeballs um, to catch the Pokemon. Because it is the Joy-Con motion controls, it might not always be the most accurate of things. Uh, on Iron, we kind of saw this weird lazy, like to the like left to right, almost like across the screen. It did hit, and thankfully the uh, starter catch is automatic. Uh, on Vermilion side, we saw a bit of like a dribbling out of the Pokeball, which is the opposite of what I did in the last two rounds, which is where you just eat it <laughs> straight past. Um, and then on Kid Rocker, he actually had a very clean catch where if you're fast enough, you can get a great instead of an excellent on your uh, Eevee or Pikachu catch. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that throughout the course of this run. It might give us a indication, maybe or maybe not, of how things will go. Iron's going to check these stats here again, 26 CP. This quiet. Will be quiet nature, which All right, is not too bad. really good. Um... I missed on Kid Rocker's screen, but on Vermilion, we're going to have a... Lonely, lonely somewhat nature. vain. All right, um, all right. Lonely is pretty good. I, I did miss it on Kid Rocker, so if anybody in chat saw it, we will, of course, take any of that information. But he didn't reset, so we know that uh, things should be okay. Oh, also quiet on Kid Rocker's screen. Not quite as ideal as Pikachu, because, of course, the starter Pokemon are special starters they have way boosted stats over any normal eevee or pikachu mm -hmm. these stars pikachu, are cracked pikachu, yeah this pikachu in particular has absolutely insane speed correct me if i'm wrong dynam 120 base speed for the the partner sounds pikachu. just about right the only thing that you really have to not even worry about for minus speed on pikachu is the archer fight in hideout uh the goal that will outspeed you if you have a minus speed nature but that's the only thing pika needs to worry about being, being outsped by which makes it kind of a weird dynamic where if you get plus speed it's actually not beneficial at all because it's just too much speed exactly but on the opposite side of things ev stats are a lot more balanced um, they're all boosted, but they're a lot more balanced, so minus speed can actually be a bit detrimental because it's not Archer's goal that you're almost always outsped by it anyways. It's actually Rival's Pidgeotto, so look for Rival 3 and Rival 4 to potentially be issues. You do get randomly outsped by some other things, but the Pidgeottos have Sand Attack, so that might come into play in the second hour of this run, but the plus special attack nature might be beneficial in some other spots so we'll see how that uh ends up panning out for sure for sure i believe if i correct me if i'm wrong also uh radicate and cadaver can also be issues for ev depending on how many speed avs you can get yeah so on the ev side of things the cadabra in rock tunnel that you're referencing actually normally outspeeds ev you tend to have to have quite high speed um, it's actually the Vulpix on that very same fight that really out speed. If you have really bad speed and bad EXP, uh, that the Vulpix can outspeed you. 
The Kangaskhan and... can outspeed you. Uh, Raticates almost always will outspeed you, but even they can be kind of iffy on the best of times. Like, for example, the uh, the Rocket Raticate before Tunnel actually has pretty decent speed, um, so Eevee tends to not outspeed it normally. Um, but it's not, like, the biggest of issues. Um, it's those Pidgeotos that can be uh, particularly bad. Exactly. Uh, Iron, seeing right here, getting the three turn on Eevee, this only really happens if you have a plus special attack nature, as well as if you get a critical hit off, which Iron did get on that critical third turn. So coming out of this rival fight one turn earlier than Pikachu normally would, which is amazing. Yeah, because Eevee normally gets a three turn on this fight. Vermillion had a good chance to get a two turn because plus attack Eevees can actually likely get that in a two shot so long as they don't get growled. Ah, oh, um, that's right. Two. Uh, growl not normally being a factor. A three turn on average. Yeah. Right. Growl not being a factor due to for Pikachu due to normal uh, to to lowering its attack, not its special attack. So Iron cleanly making out of that fight on pace with the other EV runners who get an average of three turns. You won't see any catches in the early game. They're all going to wait till Forest so they can get some better EXP, some higher level catches. A little bit of a weird Pidgey on Vermillion. Eh, to have yeah, certainly just... seen worse Route 1 Absolutely. <laughs> just got to make sure you give those Pidgeys a wide berth as they can turn 90 degrees and run straight into your, your line of sight. Uh, How many we'll times see... have you... <laughs> have you had like the like the fighter formation of the Pidgeys and then you oh get, no like, a, and then you get like a stealth rat that like comes in <laughs> just, from the other direction you, you could just get out of nowhere it's Rattata with a steel chair uh Pikachu leveling <laughs> up to six here we're gonna see those stats come up looks like we're getting to see a special defense AV on the side of iron not a bad AV to have especially considering late game fights and Weezing Sludge Bomb being a thing, and also Starmie Skull being a thing, so more than welcome to have a little bit of defense to to build up that bulk early on. Yeah, and it's opposite for the Eevee version, because Eevee's best stat is already special defense, mm. so those special defense AVs are kind of like, eh, they help a little bit, but they don't help as much as they would uh, if they were on a Pikachu. We'll see it. Kid Rocker and Iron both grab early bugs. Ooh, one so of each. One of, yeah, so one of the weird things of this game when we learned about the catch mechanics is that before you enter Ver uh, the Viridian Forest, you actually get a newbie catch bonus. It's like a 50% bonus to your catch rates. So effectively, these Pokeballs are actually great balls. Like, the calculation would work the same in that regards. So going for these bugs early almost guarantees that you can catch them one controller without a berry you do sacrifice a little bit of experience you sacrifice a couple seconds to a couple extra level ups but the the safety of having that in hand can certainly pay benefits a bit later on in the forest when we start catching our level seven pokemon once they're lured Exactly. I believe a one controller catch with a raspberry in forest for, for either a Caterpie or Weedle rounds out to just around 83%. So having that like 93% uh, pre-bug for us to, to guarantee that, bring out the second controller to catch something else in forest is a very, very safe place for both these runners. It's, it's a, you know, at the high level of this game, there are there are calculations based on not just what the percentage of the catch is, but how much time you can save versus lose. Uh, it, it's pretty easy when you say like, oh, I caught a level three bug instead of a level seven bug. So those four extra levels is eight seconds. But right. can you save those eight seconds by throwing faster and not burying and not worrying about having a breakout? And honestly, the, the answer might be yes. It's not as clear cut. Um, but it could, that's why something like a level three bug might work out just fine in these situations, so long as you get the experience you need. Right. Uh, tech's gonna help out with Vermilion Stream having a little bit of technical difficulties, but we will update you as we know more information. Uh, right now we see both Iron and Kid Rocker getting to the Pidgey fight. Pika, obviously being an electric type Pokemon, able to take out the Pidgey with ease. Unfortunately, Kid Rocker screen, getting to see how Pidgey control you a little bit with sand attack, but thankfully does get that second tackle off just fine. No punishment there. If, you, if you're if you lucky enough, and of course running the Eevee version, you can see a Pikachu in forest. It's just mm -hmm. a 5% spawn. If you catch it first off, you could actually just two control that fight immediately and just guarantee it. 
Uh, it is a little, still a little bit slower if you try to do that. Funny enough, it was Iron who actually saw a Pikachu on screen first. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, not necessarily. It was a, it was a bit earlier. So here we grab the lure, which when you pop it again, like via Pokemon Go, makes things spawn a bit more frequently. But more importantly, it forces the spawns to be at their maximum level plus one, which for the forest is plus seven. So you're going to get the most experience. They're going to be the closest to evolving that you can possibly get them. Uh, and then all these catch multipliers will add up for experience. And by multipliers, I mean first ball multiplier, getting a nice, greater, excellent throw using two control, uh, using two Pokeballs instead of one. All those add multipliers to the EXP. So EXP is mostly gained from catches in this game and not from the battle. So we're going to try to leverage that as much as possible. You see a glowing Kakuna on Iron Screen. I'll use that as an example to say if you see a glowing it means it's either a large or small Pokemon. When it's blue, it's technically small, but still has an additional uh, one and a half times multiplier. Iron's actually going to catch it, so Ooh, you will be able to see it. Yeah, I so saw Iron like deposit tiny... the Weedle there just yeah, to or... not trigger that extra evolution. So going for that extra XP on Pikachu, totally respect the play. It gets in just fine. If you throw right away when you encounter Kakuna, very, very likely to next get an excellent. Gonna get that Caterpie all the way up to level 7. Going to evolve that into Metapod straight away. Yeah, if you get that first ball excellent throw on a glowing catch, you'll see that multiplier say 9.8. In the case that it has a 10% chance that it was very large or very small, I like to call them one Wumbo catches. Uh, that Wombo or Super actually, Size, yeah. Yeah, that one, that 1.5 turns into a four times multiplier. So instead of 9.8, I think it's 26. 26 point points. Four? Yeah, that, yeah, 26.4. Like You'll see 26 and be like, oh, I got a lot of extra EXP, which can be good in some cases. But uh, in, if you have like a full party and you get a chancy, it might be bad because of all those extra levels, because levels happen one level at a time. It can be quite slow. Uh, so it is something the uh, players will manage throughout the run. Right. You got to make a decision on the fly when you see a, a glowing Chansey, glowing Raticate, glowing something. Maybe I need to do party manage a little bit. Maybe deposit a couple things that don't need extra levels. Or if you are only have, say, a starter and a grass Pokemon with you in Oddish or Bellsprout, maybe you just want to go for it and maximize the efficiency of that massive XP bomb that you'll be getting soon. Yeah, one of the things we just saw on Kid Rocker's screen is that when Eevee hits level 10, uh, and it's actually the same for Pikachu when they hit level 9, you learn Double Kick. Uh, Eevee will have to use Double Kick against Brock as the super effective move, but Pikachu gets a little help from its friends. So Dynam, if you want to go ahead and uh, explain the first of our version differences. Oh, absolutely. So you'll see Iron here. Uh, don't believe that he's caught one yet. Going to look for an Oddish on Route 2. Oddish is a version exclusive to Pikachu, while Bellsprout is a version exclusive to Eevee. Uh, Pikachu is actually going to be using Oddish for the very first gem. Uh, does manage to get the Oddish spawn there. Almost gets caught by, by the rat charging straight at him. Uh, Onyx, that Brock has, has very, very high defense, but very, very poor special defense. And Oddish has a move called Absorb, which is a special attack, whereas Bellsprout has a physical move in Vine Whip, which uh, doesn't deal a whole lot of damage to Onyx. So you'll see Eevee go ahead and Tail Whip double kick the Onyx a couple of times to bring it down, whereas Iron will just be able to throw that Oddish out in front, hit Absorb on the Geodude, hit Absorb on the Onyx, and take it down with little to no problem at all. And this will be a case for Pika like throughout the run. It's not just Oddish. You see a little bit from Nidoking and uh, sometimes you can, and uh, Growlithe or Kadabra can be options. Pikachu uses a little bit of extra help from some partner Pokemon to help with either coverage or if things might... I'm trying to think of an example. Like, is it the ground types that end up being mostly the problem? Uh... I mean, on Route 9, you have the Gloom, which uh, you, c you use Growlithe or Kadabra to either Flamethrower or Psybeam, respectively. And then just more along the lines of Pikachu not being able to hit ground types with electric moves, uh, Growlithe can also Flamethrower the Sandshrew, for example, because Sandshrew also suffers from that poor special defense. So it helps a little bit there as well. 
Uh, yeah, whereas on yeah, the Pikachu's... other side, Eevee just powers through because we'll see the uh, the special moves um, get taught when we get to Cerulean a little bit later on. So the coverage is far, far better for Eevee, but it's at the cost of actually teaching more moves in the first place. You know what I think that we missed? Chat is mentioning that uh, there was a shiny in forest from one of our runners. So uh, we'll have I to see the clip. Saw, yeah, I thought I saw it because uh, I posted it in chat. I thought I saw it at just the very last second. As Iron was exiting the forest, I believe I saw a glowing Oddish, but it was a bit more green than normal. Mm. And at first I was just like, oh, it must have just been the leaves on its head and surrounded by the tall grass. I wasn't a hundred percent sure, but uh, thanks to uh, our friends in chat, looks like it was uh, Matt. Looks like it was indeed a shiny yeah. Oddish. Goodness, <laughs> how many shinies have we seen this run in, t or this round in total? Goodness, I feel like there's been so many. Yeah, I know that there's been six caught throughout the tournament, but we've seen a handful more. I remember seeing, you know, the sunburnt Paris, and now we just got that Oddish. Joker was screaming about the shiny Snorlax <laughs> uh, in one of the, I think that was yesterday's race. Yeah, woke uh, me had, the heck up. I, I was doing laundry in the other room and I just hear shiny, <laughs> shiny, so shiny from like the other room. And I had to come rushing in and by the time it was gone because oh first, my God. like a good speed runner, uh, you usually just ignore them. <laughs> yeah, you either oh, ignore them or you catch them if they're on your Catra and send it straight to Pokemon home. Uh, Iron and Kid Rocker getting through the uh, exactly. Iron Kid Rocker getting through the Brock fight here. You'll see the differences. Eevee setting up the tail up on the Onyx to bring it down to double kicks. Uh, Iron just hitting Absorb and even got the Rock Throw miss, I believe. So very solid fight from from Iron as Vermilion bring out that second controller just to kind of secure the. Uh, the kill on Geodude, especially because Eevee is not yet level 10, as I'm noticing right now. Ooh. Only level 9, so doesn't have access to the double kick. So good audible from Vermilion to kind of make up for that, setting up Tail Whip to bring Geodude's defense down. Hopefully Eevee gets level 10 by that Onyx. Probably should. Uh, Bellsprout getting actually kind of low here. So we'll see how this fight pans out for him, but good call to bring out the 2 controller to, to fix that uh, Just hitting early XP that. problem. Perfect. Yeah, and this uh, this uh, when we mentioned uh, EXP, it, it's very important for the EV side to hit level ten, because while <clears throat> excuse me, while Brock's physical gym requirement is to have a grass type or water type in your party, uh, it's just easier to use EV's double kick to uh, um, effectively five turn Brock. Uh, but if you're not level ten, you don't know uh, double kick yet, which is one of the disadvantages because. For whatever reason, Pikachu learns it at level nine, and you know, for Eevee, you kind of wish you knew it at nine, but you would still want to get level ten nonetheless. Ooh, Bellsprout going down here is going to be kind of interesting for Vermilion. Uh, you don't have revives this access this early into the game. I believe there might actually be one on Route three in the very last patch of grass. Not entirely sure. I haven't checked it myself. Uh, but that Bellsprout's going. To Unless Vermilion takes the center or manages to find a stray revive somewhere, that Bellsprout is going to stay fainted all the way through, and basically until he revives it or deposits it. This this brings up kind of an interesting point, especially for Bellsprout specifically, um, because obviously the catch route of this game is so dynamic. This is what makes this a fantastic race game to begin with. But a lot of the early iterations of the game for the Eevee side didn't actually evolve Bellsprout anyways. Like, you mm -hmm. catch it at level 7, evolves at 21, and you're basically saying that's 14 levels plus a handful of level up moves. So the extra overhead ends up being close to about 50 extra seconds on right. top of the 30 second evolution, which in and of itself sounds kind of slow. But borrowing a strap that the Pikachu runners have been doing them for a long time. Since you have to use Oddish for so many fights anyways, it does end up being kind of worth just keeping Oddish in your party. You're using it for Brock, you're using it for Balboon, you're using it on the bridge. By that point, it's like, I might as well evolve it into Gloom anyways. So the idea for the Eevee side was, what if we just kept Bellsprout? Even if we don't use it for any of the fights, what advantages can we get out of keeping Bellsprout to evolve it into Weep Bell? One, you're just adding one to your catch tracker anyways. 
And two, you're always allowed to use two controllers for catches, which wasn't always the case when you got rid of the Bell Sprout. Basically, you would empty out your party after Mount Moon and just have Eevee in your party, which meant whatever your next catch was, whether it was on Route 25 or on Route 6, would always have to be a one controller catch, and those are not nearly as consistent. So we would normally keep Bell Sprout in our party as a consistency measure, plus you get a little extra EXP for two controller catches anyways. So we did see Vermilion, uh, Vermilion I believe, uh, center heal anyways. Uh, but could you, in this situation, kind of go back to that old strat and be like, well, I didn't need Bellsprout to evolve. It's not required by any stretch of the imagination. Right. I, I don't exactly know what I would have done in Vermilion's situation. I don't, obviously don't run Eevee, so don't exactly know how much a part in Pokemon plays. But as you mentioned before, having that two controller catch is... Very, very nice. Also, two controller battle, really nice as a safety measure. Uh, I am very thankful to be in the generation of Let's Go runners that came in after the whole allowing two controllers before the ban on two controllers was a thing. I heard that was miserable at best. <laughs> I can no only imagine. Uh, you'll see another difference between Pikachu and Eevee going into Mount Moon before their, their slew of catches. Uh, you'll see Iron uh, using the Oddish for both the Bellsprout and the Sanctuary Trainer here, just because it's already out in front. Oddish can two-hit KO the Bellsprout with Acid and then immediately absorb the Sanctuary uh, right after that, although you could be at the risk of either speed tying or losing the speed battle. Uh, whether Whereas Eevee here is going to menu, set up Allure, deposit some things, get their entire party set up for the string of three, hopefully at least three catches in Moon before tangling with the, the last here. The, the, the meme is big pink thing, but we'll take little pink things. Uh, Clefairy being um, the normal catch that's worth the most EXP uh, between that Geodude and Paris, which will be Hopefully, all three of our runners get all three great Oh, look at that iron. little cute Clefairy as he <laughs> picks up the Moonstone. I love when they spawn in and then you interact with something and they get caught halfway, so they, they appear just absolutely tiny. It's like bonjour in a very high-pitched voice. <laughs> bonjour! But you'll see all of our runners switching to Great Balls here. Kid Rocker just getting that excellent on the Geodude first cycle. Iron waiting until the Clefairy attacks just to secure that excellent as well, making sure that he gets as much XP as possible from from this small pink thing. Yeah, the the Clefairy if at the high end, like if you're going for a really, really fast time, you're gonna see a lot of runners tend to YOLO throw almost everything. Uh, but at the race level, especially for Clefairy, as you see how much experience it's worth. It's the most important thing to get that excellent on to maximize that multiplier. Yeah, you'll see Pikachu being at level 13 and three quarters there. Uh, you'll definitely want to see these runners being level 15 coming out of Mount Moon. Being level 15 is the next gym requirements. You do need a level 15 Pokemon to enter Misty's gym. Uh, Iron should be able to get that no problem with uh, at least a Geodude plus Paris catch. Uh, we'll have to check how Vermilion starters doing, as well as Kid Rocker's EV, as yeah, they continue through the, their caches. Yeah, typically the rest of the fights and the battles in Mount Moon is worth just shy of a level. So you want to see 14 and change, uh, leaving this basement room for all exactly. the runners. In the case of Iron, you need uh, you need two bits of change because you've already done the Sand True fights. Uh, pretty good start on Kid Rocker's screen. Two glowing catches. Ooh, it's very nice. Fairy. Yeah, we'll have to see if that small pink thing shows up, or maybe if a big pink thing shows up, uh, Kid Rocker will opt to deposit all of his bugs, his newly acquired Geodude in Paris, just to make sure to get this out of the party so they don't gain those extra levels that we were talking about uh, a little bit earlier, each level costing you about two seconds, move learnings costing a little bit more than that. Uh, Eevee being level 14 and over a half here should be good heading out of Mount Moon for Kid Rocker. Uh, see a Clefairy on Vermilion screen as uh, Zubat uh, 
walks straight into him. Somehow the devs made Zubat just as annoying in this game as they did in in the original they, games. They sure did. Did you see on, uh, I think it was on Twitter the other day, because Pokemon's been doing the 151. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, that th they, like, posted all the Zubats, and I think it was, like, Pokemon TCG replied with a repel card. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is pretty good. Uh, excellent, excellent throw for Vermillion on that Clefairy. Well done there. And Kid Rocco um, does get that Clefairy here. Uh, going to opt to deposit a couple of things here. Uh, probably going to be about net neutral considering how high the Beedrill was, how high the Paris was in XP compared to everything else. So just wanting to avoid uh, Geodude and Paris learning moves on level up. They come in at level 11 and uh, both of them learn Stealth Rock and Growth at 12, respectively. Kind of an awkward halfway jump to the side for Kid Rocker. Yeah, there just is a that excellent. Bit, yeah, there's, there's always a little bit of auto-correcting when it comes to the motion controls, but you'll see Pokemon when they jump left and right, sometimes they don't go all the way left and right, so it gets a little bit annoying if they're kind of halfway. In this case, it doesn't hurt him because he is already level 15. Getting 15 before that Sand True fight uh, gives you the best chance to one-shot and hit all the ranges. Ooh, for Kid Rocker, th Kid Rocker <laughs> thinking for a split second about that Clefable, but if having saw, already party managed. Yeah, you saw that little stutter step for like just a second being like, yeah, no. Yeah, Clefable is about a best case scenario in this in this current situation, about 67% chance to get in. Chance is a little bit higher than that, around 75 or so. Uh, but as Kid Rocker had already party managed a little bit, probably doesn't want to waste any more time with, with this menu. He's just going to opt to skip that uh, large pink thing with wings and move on to the Sentry fight, knocking out cleanly in one hit. I think if it was a Chansey, I think is this would have been a different scenario. Uh, Chansey's worth almost twice as much EXP as the Clefable is outright. Mm -hmm. um, so, and e EXP is for I'll I'll say this plain and clearly for for the EV side. EXP oh yeah, is it. you want as much EXP on EV as possible. It helps with everything. Yeah. One thing that I hear time and time again is that EV runs live and die by the EV stats, and the more that you can boost those stats with XP, the better for EV. Yeah, for example, having level 15 even before that Sandshrew fight nearly guarantees that you're going to Oko the Sandshrew. It does guarantee that you Oko this Drowsy, uh, and I believe it also guarantees the both Pokemon on the Super Nerd as well. That in its of itself can save four turns just from having level 15 instead of 14 starting at that at that one fight. Even right. though you're required to have 15 exiting, if you get 15 that those five fights early, you can start saving time from there. Right. And the reason why 15 we place such big importance on levels like 15 or 13 or levels that end in 8 or 0 also is because the way that the Pokemon damage calculation works is just due to rounding. Uh, you actually get a you get more damage at those levels that end in 3, 5, 8, or 0 than you do at any other level. So you'll see Pikachu here being level 14 wasn't able to one-shot that uh, Drowsy with Headbot. If it, was, if it was 15, could possibly have. Uh, should be able to hit 15 before the Magnemite on the Super Nerd fight. The Voltorb should get Iron Pikachu enough XP for that. And with that, the Magnemite is all but guaranteed to, to die to a double kick. Uh, was noting Iron's AVs at level 9, did receive two AVs in attack, AVs being awakening values and our weighted stat di distributions that replace EVs or effort values in this game. Uh, so as long as you're level 15 with at least one attack AV, you guarantee the range on the Magnemite with double kick. Uh, one point of note for Vermilion's run is that he actually got double Moonstone Yes, uh, and has and you saw just evolve the Clefairy into Clefable, and still does have Wigglytuff marked. Uh, setting the time can result in that double Moonstone. Basically, hidden items in this game have a varying degree of respawn rate. In the case of the Moonstone, uh, has a 50% chance of respawning once you're after midnight, so long as you are a not in the same room, or if you're in some kind of like menu or battle menu um, can help to 
to re-trigger that. So we'll see, usually runners set their time for about 11.33 p.m. They hit that basement room right as they get to midnight. We'll pick up the guaranteed Moonstone right before midnight and then hope it respawns after. Uh, in the case of Vermilion, got it, uh, got that to work and we'll get a extra Pokemon as a result. Very, very nice. Uh, any Kabuto enjoyers in chat, Iron picking up the Dome Fossil as both he and Kid Rock are entering the Jesse and James fight. Uh, you'll see Pikachu set up an X special attack and Thundershock the coughing, followed up by a Thundershock on the Ekans and an Acid from the Oddish, which is a spread move in doubles battles, hopefully aiming for the two turn. Uh, tell me a little bit how about uh, how the Eevee fight goes in this uh in this fight, t -Pat. Yeah, so Eevee actually sets up an next attack and is going to headbutt both the Pokemon. The coughing is a range depending on your attack, but if you can get rid of it first, you want to go for it. Uh, if you know that your range is bad or if you're only level 14, you're just going to attack the, uh, you're going to attack the Ekans first, so that way you are limiting the amount of time loss. Right. Coughing does come with poison gas, status ailment that uh, depletes your HP at the end of every turn. Status is bad not only because you have to cure it after battle, uh, but even though each of our runners has turned off battle animations, status animations are still a thing and they cause significant lag, uh, causing lost time for every status ailment that you're inflicted or inflict against opposing Pokemon as well. So it's almost like uh, like the olden days where you tried to not super effective to get that extra super effective text, even though the text is much, much faster. In this case, it's like, uh, maybe I don't want to inflict a status condition because that could result in a little bit of extra lag from the game. Exactly. Uh, noting catch counts coming out directly from Mount Moon, Iron currently has 13 marks. Uh, Kid Rocker having 13 marked as well. Vermillion also having 13 marked. So very, very even on catch counts. I think this Mankey will bring Iron up to 14 once it does actually get into the ball. Getting a little bit trolled by the Mankey attacks, a little bit trolled by the breakouts, but should be able to secure the excellent here to guarantee that. As Kid Rocker learning a couple of those EV special moves that you had mentioned T-Pad before. Yeah, yeah, the EV special moves are, uh, they're very special because in this game, the partner starter Pokemon are not allowed to evolve. They cannot be Raichu, they cannot be any of the evolutions, but in turn, they do learn these super duper special broken and overpowered moves. For Eevee, you're gonna see one of every kind of type that would match its evolutions. And in this first move tutoring, it's the original three. It's the Jolteon, Flareon, Vaporeon move. So it's the electric, fire, and water, respectively. They are wildly broken. It's why Eevee has such great coverage with access to basically its evolution moves. Uh, in the case of Eevee, the three moves are Buzzy Buzz, which is an electric move that always paralyzes, Sizzly Slide, a fire move that always burns, and Bouncy Bubble, a water move that heals you a la uh, like Giga Drain. That alone is massive through the early game. We'll also see the, uh, quote, Espeon's psychic move, which would set up light screen, but uh, having a psychic move, access to that before you fight a bunch of poison types, again, amazing coverage. Those will be the only four that we see from Eevee, so we don't see the dark move or the grass move or the uh, ice move or the fairy type move, but they do exist. No uh, baddie bad case, today. Yeah, no baddie bad today. In the case of Iron running Pika, um, there is just one move tutoring move to teach here, uh, but it, one is enough, isn't it? Yes, Zippy Zap is a very, very strong move. Uh, is electric type, 50 base power, uh, priority plus two, so all along the likes of extreme speed, beats out even quick attack in that regard. Uh, always crits, so essentially, is a 75 like a base power thing. move. Along with the same type attack bonus, you get all of those multipliers stacking. Pikachu get, becomes a very hard physical hitter in the early game. Uh, that is the only move that Pikachu will get. Uh, we don't have access to the insane type coverage that Eevee does, or at least not normally, uh, which is why Pikachu draws upon that toolbox of Pokemon that you catch throughout the run in things like Growlithe, Kadabra, Rhyhorn, Nidoking, and the like. In so all of the so instead of the 
evolutions that is where all the moves come from it's more like the original art from yellow version you know where right it has the balloons so you have the the, the floaty move, fall and then you have surfing pikachu so you have access to a water type move yep, you'll, good old you'll splishy splash those, yeah you'll see those sprinkled in um but again you don't need to teach them all zippy zap is just enough yeah screw it we zippy zap <laughs> Uh, Misty offers a bit of a difference uh, between the two different versions. Kid Rocker's already through his. We'll see uh, that version on Vermilion side in just a bit. For, but for the Pikachu side, uh, it's actually a bit less threatening so long as you Oko the uh, Starmie, which is usually likely, but is based on your attack stat. Yes. Iron has 40 attack at level 16, which is three more points, or four more points than enough to guarantee the range on Starmie. Uh, so lots of attacks, uh, AVs for Iron, especially considering that his nature is quiet, which is plus special attack, so a little bit more weighted towards that special attack uh, stat. But honestly, his attack and special attack are balanced at 40 right now, so very, very good going to transition from the early game physical attack to late game special attacking with things like Thunderbolt. It's wild that Misty Starmie is like a surprisingly dangerous Pokemon. Obviously, if you miss that range on the Pikachu side, you are almost always dead to a Scald, mm -hmm. um, unless you have very high special defense. It's kind of the opposite on the easy EV version, because as I mentioned, special defense stat is its best stat. However, it still hits very hard uh, and you never can outspeed it. So you actually have to utilize the uh, not Zippy Zap, Buzzy Buzz's paralyzing effect to under speed on turn one, but out speed on turn two. So that is how Eevee gets away with that. But you are, oh, I mean, you are always going to get hit with Scald. Even if you do somehow, you know, get a crit and you can one shot it, you still are always going to get hit with Scald. Fun fact about the Starmie, uh, Scald being a very strong 80 pace power move, I believe, water move, gets same type attack bonus again, times 1.5 damage. Uh, that Starmie has an impish nature, uh, which I feel is what the devs put in to sort of nerf Starmie a little bit, due to impish being, I believe, minus special attack plus defense. Yes, uh, that is correct. So, kind of hilarious that they gave Starmie Scald. Vermilion, unfortunately, getting that burn, did get the Buzzy Buzz off, though, so going to come out of this fight relatively unscathed, but Vermilion kind of having a time in uh, in the early two gym battles. Bellsprout going down for one, and then getting burned and low HP on, on Misty now. It is interesting because in this game, if you do look at the trainer data, a lot of the natures actually do make sense for your opponent's Pokemon. Like, I think Giovanni's Persian is uh, jolly natured, so it's plus speed and minus special attack. Usually mm -hmm. tend to see either neutral or benefiting natures, but because Starmie is so insanely powerful, especially at that early level, with an incredibly good move, they had to just give it an impish nature. They had to put the limiter on that Starmie, otherwise it might literally be too tough of a gym to beat. I can't imagine what the Misty fight would be like if they oh. gave that Starmie a modest nature. Oh like, no. <laughs> like, You'd have to grind the grass right outside for those characters to get those XP. Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the game would certainly be a lot different, you know, if one thing were different. Exactly. Uh, interesting thing to note, I've been keeping track of at least Iron's Pikachu stats because I'm more familiar with it. Iron's uh, stat spread is 4 AVs in attack, 3 AVs in special attack. So going to have a l more than likely with a plus special attack nature, going to nuke the Arbok and Weezing in the hideout in Jesse and James fights, uh, if, if he uses for hideout anyway. Uh, and then go that those four stats in attack, you're just going to carry the early game for him more than likely. You kind of want to see, see the same st uh, stat spread on uh, Eevee as well. Um, in fact, the best would almost be slightly the opposite of the attack special attack. You would rather hmm. have the plus attack nature and then just load up on uh, special attack AVs. Uh, in that case, you can have you can have the exact same effect 
looking ahead already at that hideout, if you had that kind of EV, you are, I mean, you know, you know Lance's Dragonite in that, like, in the evolution special where he comes up and he just like tears out a console and throws it oh, yeah. the wall and it explodes. <laughs> That's what Eevee or Pikachu can do. It just, you just run into hideout like you own the place and you just tear it apart using both your attack and special attack, should it be high enough. Sometimes high EXP can result in that as well. Uh, if anybody is familiar with uh, Echi's Eevee world record, um, it's basically that. It's a, it's a plus attack Eevee, it gets a ton of special attack AVs, and you get the supersized Chansey to bloister that EXP to the level where you are flying through the game. Like that EV took care of business. And exactly. you want to see that yeah, and you want to see that stat distribution almost on both sides. Like again, the EXP and the high attack, high special attack can help in so many ways. And knowing what your stats are at this stage of the game still will help to give you an idea of how that might all pan out later on. Uh let's see if Kit Rocker goes for any of these meows. He does not not. No, that glowing Meowth was Ooh. way off to the left. Would have taken him way too long to get over there and run all the way back. You do have to consider when you're going for these catches, like the time investment, not only due to like the level ups, due to the moves learned on evolution or whatnot, but also just the time that it could take to go out of your way to get a catch. Maybe you can pick up something a little bit faster on the next route. Uh, I agree. When I saw that Meowth go literally all the way to the left, as far as possible, even I was just like... That's pretty out of the way. A second did spawn and it was still in the grass. Um, and he may have been looking at it because his movement wasn't super clean. It didn't cost him any time yet. Yeah, but at that, at that time, you kind anyways. of just commit to your movements and just Let's move on. Let's see if Iron goes for this Venonat. Uh, that's uh, a second angry. Venonat oh, off to the right. Oh, no! <laughs> All had right. the same effect where you, where you saw one and was like, that's a little far. See a second closer? It's still not. That's a very clean skip, by the way, from Iron. Uh, yes. Really, really took the took the the pathing uh, much shorter. Looks a little uh, scarier, but it's all the same. The classic serpentine maneuver. As Iron picking up the ether, waiting for that last to to rotate upwards as he picks up the ether. Uh, the ether is very important for Pikachu. Uh, it's a uh, it's an item that restores your, your move usage, your PP. Uh, Pikachu will opt to pick up one of those types of items a little bit earlier to help out with menuing. Uh, after the Vermilion Shop, you'll be able to access both your X attacks and your X special attacks just with one menu input, uh, either to the left or upwards. Uh, Eevee already has an extra item in a burn heal normally, so you'll see Eevee picking up one of those uh, elixirs or max elixirs much much later in the run in mansion kid rocker being the first to help our help our buddy bill out bill who uh has made the the pokemon box system in in the gen 1 games uh not ditching bill helping him out as in his time of need and going to be the first to to leave bill's house with a uh, still 13 13 catches, Iron not too far behind with 14 catches, Vermillion still on 13 as he finishes off the Rocket Grunt Trainer here, cleanly knocks out in one hit. Uh, we all know the copy pops by now, rough give or take 30 to 40 just, seconds. Just about to, to reference it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so Iron and Kid Rocker kind of on pace right now. I would say Kid Rocker maybe a little bit ahead, but Vermillion not not being too far behind, especially considering the issues that he's had in the early game. Ooh. Going for a knock Ooh. skip, Let's taking it a little bit get... slow, but oh, I, res okay. I respect that's it. Fun. That's fine. Yeah. It's, that was kind of like a half knock skip. Still ended up waiting for the spinner either way. Um... <laughs> taking <laughs> a little bit of careful movement. movements. We'll, we'll take it. But gets, Honestly, gets through all the same. Listen, honestly, better than me. I had an optional on uh, Route 25 uh, just a couple days ago, so I Ooh. absolutely respect it. Exactly. You hit one of those optionals, you say, eh, maybe uh, not for the next couple of runs. Wish you could hit rewind on your life. I mean, exactly. more than just in Let's Go. <laughs> some, some other if things. If only. I wish I... <laughs> 
But we're not gonna get too existential here as Kid Rocker making out of Cerulean and heading into the next catching section very, very soon. Just going to encounter Trace over here. The infamous Route 6. So there's not a whole lot to catch here. It's like two semi, like like two feel good catches. Um, you wouldn't call anything required on this upcoming route. Um, for, for Eevee, anyway. For Eevee, it's just Vulpix and Jigglypuff are kind of the two standard, um, but not necessary. Abra is a nice bonus, and of course, if Chansey pops up, uh, you, you can we take make those. Your own, you can make your own inklings over that. Um, but really, the big requirement for Eevee side is to hit level 18. 18, again, being one of those levels that end in 3, 5, 8, or 0. Uh, gives you enough power to actually fight the upcoming rival, the boat rival. Uh, it'll make the uh, Pidgey or the Pidgeotto uh, a guaranteed KO at 18. However, remember how uh, Kid Rocker is running quiet, minus speed. We will have mm. to see how that will play out on the upcoming fight. Again, if you get a Chansey, everything might just be fixed. Everything's fine with more mind. XP. Uh, but we will see how this plays out. But as you were alluding to on the Pika side of things, there yes. is a required catch on Route 6. Yeah, more required than not. You can move on without it, but it's it feels very bad if you do. We want to see a little fire puppy strolling across Route 6 as we move about the grass. Growlithe is going to be a very essential one doubles partner in the upcoming fights against Boat Rival as well as the two fights on Route 9. Almost assuredly need a special attacker for that that can hit gloom and sandshrew uh abra into cadabra also works if you're able to get it evolved early enough uh but pikachu really needs that help from the partner pokemon otherwise you're in a world of hurt so we'll see a vulpix on kid rocker screen so solid solid catch there yeah, when we see a Jigglypuff, um, we tell this to beginners, you always have to YOLO throw Jigglypuff because its jump animation is very, very slow. It is a balloon Pokemon after all, so it does tend to float very, very slowly through the air. Uh, that's just kind of the one, the one point of note, especially for uh, any new runners that were running this game, that it's like, hey, you see Jigglypuff, you gotta go. And e even then it could start to jump very fast on you. Yeah, go go fast or wait for Jigglypuff to float, float away and come right back down. Iron it using that. And when it hits, and when it hits down, ooh, careful! Ooh. Oh, that is an excellent move. Oh from gosh, Rocker. well done. You actually had to dodge the dodge the optional on the right side. You're safe in the grass, but he can see all the way to the end of that path. And you also had to at attack the Abra from behind, otherwise it teleports away. That was very, very tight smooth. line, very tight line, and Iron does get that uh, that Growlithe that we've been talking about earlier is glowing, so it's going to help out with that XP. Going to wait for the attack, going to get off an excellent throw here to uh, get that Pikachu some levels, get that Osh some levels, being closer to its evolution at 21 for Gloom. Uh, Kid Rocker also going to go for the Pidgey is glowing so good xp like you mentioned going to further boost eevee's xp as well also going to further that abra towards kadabra in one level uh motion control moment Ooh. unfortunately yeah. <laughs> that'll uh, yeah. yeet the pokeballs so pidgey's an interesting one on route six it's because the idea is well if you catch it on route 17 you actually get three pokemon out of it kind of like the bugs uh in this case pidgey in two levels evolves all the way into pidgeot uh, looks like Iron's about to go for this Vermilion skip. Yep, everybody has their... Board, it's all good! There it is! <laughs> everybody has their own way of tackling it. Some stutter step like Iron does, some go the straight north-south path, some take it at an angle, some juke to the left, juke to the right. Uh, whatever method gets you right in between. Be running. Yep, and exactly. Like Very clean. From Kid Rocker. So as yeah. I was mentioning with the Pidgeys, it was like, if you if you catch it here, um, easy catch tends to spawn very frequently and you'll get Pidgeotto in a level, but you are sacrificing away Pidgeot as an option. But the problem is, is if you're going forward on Route 17, it is a less common of a spawn. So it's kind of like pick your poison when it comes to uh, Pidgeys and when to catch them. Do you go really early and then you still leave Pidgeotto as an open door? Or do you catch it on Route 6 and just say, I'm getting this here, and I'm not worrying about Pidgeot? 
Right, it's a very fine balancing act between wanting to get some XP earlier for your starter, wanting to save the save the catches a little bit later and kind of gamble on that as well. Vermillion not able to get that YOLO throw out just in time. Gonna gonna hit that Jigglypuff as it comes right back down. Hopefully it stays in the ball. Uh, noticing that Iron and Kid Rocker, oh, unfortunate breakout, uh, did keep their fossils. Uh, the fossils are a good backup to have. If you head over to Cinnabar Island, the, the lab on the island does allow you to resurrect these fossils. Uh, so this will turn into Kabuto and Omanite respectively for them, securing an extra two catches later on down the line if they get really unlucky. Uh, Vermillion, I think, getting a little bit frustrated with it. Puff here. Does there, manage to nailed. get the excellent finally. Thank you. Finally. It was just obviously a bit of an unfortunate break on that first one. Uh, I think it broke out a second time. It attacked. Yeeted a lot of frustration. So that was like five attacks to get it. But Big Puff is still a pretty nice catch. And obviously hitting level 18, the most important thing that Vermillion wants. Right. And remember that Vermillion did have that extra Moonstone spawn in Mount Moon. So. This is essentially two catches for the price of one and just needs to get into the ball. And more importantly, does hit that level 18 threshold like you had mentioned earlier. Uh, not seeing anything on, else on Route 6 going to cleanly make that skip. All three runners making it north-south. Uh, hopefully they will also be able to make the same route back up. I don't know about you. I just feel like there's a little bit of extra give on the right side of that skip. Because uh, I... I, I saw Vermillion almost correct to the right, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, is that good enough? And it was just uh, just in there. I don't know. For the way that I handle it, I if I get hit by one of them, I tend to hit the right trainer more often than not, maybe because I just swing more to the right, Joy-Con moment, who knows. Uh, but again, everyone has their way of handling it. Uh, Iron and Kick Rocker getting into the boat rival fight now. You'll see Pikachu here. Uh, Samp and X attack to Zippy Zap down the Pidgeotto. Zippy Zap having that priority move, making sure that Pidgeotto doesn't get a chance to throw Pocket Sand at you. And then is going to opt to Zippy Zap again with Helping Hand. Helping Hand being a move that Growlithe knows that helps boost your partner Pokemon's attack by a multiplier. And then we'll be able to take out the Oddish with a combination of Headbutt and Flamethrower. Meanwhile, on the Eevee side, it's... Uh... It's X special attack turn one to Buzzy Buzz the Pidgeotto, and then X attack turn two to clean up the Pikachu and the Oddish. There is a way that Pikachu can also one control of this fight if Iron's Pikachu had been level 21, especially considering that he is plus special attack. Uh, Pikachu learns Thunderbolt at level 21, which is a very, very strong special special electric move 90 base power give or take uh can one shot the Peugeot with ease and then you can set up a couple of x attacks to headbutt or rather zippy zap down the eevee and then headbutt down the oddish right after that making the fight a little bit quicker than if you had to control it uh but not having the xp totally fine because iron does have that fire puppy in slot two I, I'm, I'm gonna say something controversial, but feel free to stop me. Uh, Eevee all right. Can all, Eevee can also one controller that fights. Uh, it's called the level 27, and just ah yes, mascot. yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the get super sized chancy on route six strategy to one controller <laughs> the boat I, rival fight. I actually did the calcs on this. It's 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 honestly quite reasonable if you're 25 again hitting that that level threshold. Um, the, the key here is that you want to make sure that you can OCO the Pidgeotto at plus zero, um, so that way you don't get pocket sand, uh, and then you can just deal with the other two Pokemon. Um, yeah, it, it's possible. <laughs> you it don't is, bank on it. You don't bank you don't, on it very often. <laughs> you never bank on it, but it's really good to have those that information in hand for those very like outlier like what if you are super over level or what if i'm super under level like what do i do because some of those things just aren't in in the statter notes that are have been available in Ooh, nice the, the resources yeah very very good course correct gonna encounter this jigglypuff over here imagine encountering anything unlured on route six am i right imagine also that that didn't look like an excellent caught the edge of the circle we'll take that Good catch, never, good catch. I'm never lucky like that. <laughs> okay, 
Kid Rocker making a very clean skip up as well. Uh, when Vermillion's stream comes back up, we'll be able to update you on uh, on how he's faring. Uh, but for now, Iron. This is an Jig extremely, in hand. extremely close race. Yes, very much so. Kid Rocker and Iron both with 16 catches, so they are on catch pace with each other. Kid Rocker just a little bit ahead in the underground path. Yeah, just a little bit of the underground ahead. But yeah, it's nice because again, like with that Jigglypuff catch, it did put him right on that 16, uh, even on catches. So this is pretty much like step for step and obviously this early in the game. Like it's still well anybody's game, especially coming up to that crucial route ten. Oh, um, don't the, remind me about route yeah, ten. Yeah, <laughs> you gro you groaning tells tells me uh, everything I need to know about route ten, uh, and probably all of you in chat as well. It's just it's a make or break portion of the run. F effectively, five things can spawn there, and the more you get to spawn immediately, just the happier you, you are. You are just more set up for the run. If you don't get the right things or in the right order, it can be a bit miserable. I can imagine on the uh, Pikachu side of things, because Nidoran male, for the most part, is like the required catch. Not right. seeing that can be a lot more miserable than just the, oh, I, I'm missing a catch on the Eevee side. Yeah, you definitely want at least one of the Nidos for both Helping Hand and a little bit of bulk to help set up with Pikachu or Rhyhorn later on. Uh, there are strategies without them, but highly advisable to stick along Route 10 to uh, secure at least one of those before moving on with your catch route in Rock Tunnel. Of course, Route 9 is actually interesting because we see we still see the big differences between the two versions uh, and how they handle these two fights. Weird to have kind of two random required fights just on Route 9. Weirdly enough, both trainers lead Pokemon with Sand Attack, so it's kind of important to be able to dispose of them before you get trolled. The way Eevee does it is you just pick up a guard spec because it is so unlikely that you can plus two uh, headbutt and get the KO. You typically need to be a plus attack uh, or just have a ton of attack AVs. And even then it's still not guaranteed in most cases. Right, and for the Pikachu side of things, you two controller fights, set up an X attack on Pikachu with that Growlithe second turn. Uh, can be arranged at level 19 for double kick, but with Iron's cracked attack stat, should have no problem hitting that range as the second sand attack poke comes out on the second trainer. Uh, Pikachu going to opt to X special attack uh, and then flamethrower with the Growlithe. Flamethrower being an insane move for Growlithe to have at this level. 90 base power for a level 17 Pokemon. Manages to hit the range just fine. It should be able to clean up the Raticate not too long after that. Yeah, because that Growlithe was still level 17. So you really like to see that you catch Growlithe first on Route 6 get that extra catch EXP on it to hit 18. Um, just to, and correct me if I'm wrong, guarantee that at 18? All but guaranteed, except if your growl special attack is garbage. Is, is doo doo. Yeah, in the, in the case of Eevee, you actually want to be level 20 uh, for that fight because Bouncy Bubble, I believe, is again, near guaranteed. Um, and since uh, Kid Rocker is running plus special attack, it's actually fine. He would have been fine at even level 19. Uh, 19 is just a it's a range in some cases, but 20 feels very safe. Uh, when your minus special attack can be a little bit uh, spooky. Yeah. Over on Vermilion side, just giving an update. Stream back. Thank, thank you, Tech, for that. Uh, had a little bit of trouble on the rival, the boat rival fight. Saw Bellsprout was fainted during that menu, uh, but did manage to hit the the trainer skip just fine here. So no optionals yet from any of our runners. Hopefully, no optionals to come. Uh, as Vermillion catching that Pidgey, again, going to opt for that secured double catch Pidgey going to Pidgeotto as he goes into the, the Route 9 gauntlet. So as, see you, what... as you see the, the the tide start to swing here, that's an excellent Nidoran mail for Iron. Yes, thank goodness. W waiting, and honestly, Raticate here is a wonderful source of experience. I'd be so interested to see if Iron is just going to turn around and immediately catch that Raticate. Because EXP on the Nidoran mail can be uh, quite crucial for Pikachu. Yeah, I imagine that Iron will, noting that Iron does have a Rattata already that he caught on Route 2. So doesn't have to worry about extra levels on it. Just going to hopefully grab that Raticate. Good amount of XP for the Pikachu. Good amount of XP for the Oddish to get it to Gloom. And then 
as you had mentioned, for the Nidoran male to evolve into Nidorino, get those extra XP boosts for that as well. One of the weird, like, cool things that came out of us learning the catch formula, which again, we we are, as a community, feel almost entirely indebted to Anubis for finally yes. digging that out. Shout out to Anubis. After like three and a half years, once we learned about those catch rates, two things happened. One, we learned that the second Pokeball does matter. The circle, you know, the all of the Pokemon Go circle, only calculates a one controller catch, which is why it never looked like the second controller mattered, but it in fact does. So that's why we see the uh, um, the switch over to now Great Ball, Great Ball, instead of Great Ball, Pokeball. That alone improves catch rates across the board, but it also specifically improved the catch rates and the consistency of those first stage Pokemon or second stage or whatever you want to call it, those first evolved Pokemon like Raticate, like, like Nidorino or Nidorina or Graveler. Uh, all now actually have pretty decent catch rates. And with a Raspberry double Great Ball, excellent. Uh, I believe this is 99% plus. Like if yes. if that Raticate had like the highest possible CP, which is part of the catch rate formula, it, it would have like the slimmest of chances of breaking out. If you don't Raz it, it's kind of in the 90% range. Same for the evolved Nidorans. Uh, but having that as an option made the earlier Radata so much more viable because you're just saying, oh, I'm just going to catch Raticate later and get the EXP off of it. It's the same idea of why we catch Graveler in the first place because Graveler is such a great source of that EXP. Why not double down and do that for Raticate as well? Exactly. And it also just allows you to throw a whole lot faster on this route. For example, the, the lower, the lower, like, basic stage Pokemon to put it into TCG terms, so to speak. <laughs> uh, so like Things like Spiro, Rattata, Nidor both Nidorans, both baby Nidorans, have a really good chance to get in if you just throw and not even hit the circle, upwards of 80 plus. So yeah, say- Nice is like almost guaranteed. Right, so if you're just filling up your party here because you can get XP in Rock Tunnel, say you get a Graveler to get all of those one level evolutions up, Maybe you just want to take this route a little bit faster, not worry too much on EXP if you've already got a good EXP route going, and just kind of blitz through this route as fast as you can. Especially all these small Pokemon, they're not worth a ton of EXP anyways. So what's the difference between getting 250 versus 150 EXP? It's not going to be enough to make a difference. And that ended up being the deciding factor of how we got this game from a 302 to sub three. I know it mm -hmm. doesn't feel like that, but really knowing that you can do much faster throws and be a lot more aggressive with things like that, that confidence plus the catch rate, plus knowing to throw faster really added up at that top level. And you're actually seeing that play out. Yeah, we're probably getting a couple extra misses because we're getting weird cycles or the Pokemon are attacking, but you see the aggressive and the confidence that, hey, I can just throw at these things instead of waiting for that perfect, excellent throw. Uh, by the way, I did see a, uh, I did see a Krabby. Uh, I think it was on Kid Rocker's screen. Uh, Krabby's kind of the bonus catch here. It's the lowest percentage spawn, um, but can also fill in two extra uh, Pokemon when you get it, and it can just be nicer near the end game. Yeah, it does evolve in four levels instead of one, but typically you want to front load all of your catches anyways because it just makes your end game catches, you know, you're just in a lot more comfortable of a position once you are post the rocket sections. Right, right. Vermilion also, Vermilion getting, also the, uh, getting the crab it. over here. And Iron doing a little bit of party management here. It did get a couple of things evolved, going to evolve the Nidorino into Nido King in the same menu. Actually, interesting call here. Opting to deposit the Nidoran female here. Going to go for this glowing Nidorina to get a little bit more XP uh, depositing the Nidoran female just so that it won't evolve into Nidorina after he already gets this catch. I kind of like this play because you had a party manage anyways. And right. It was on the screen. So you didn't really lose any time at all going uh, depositing the Nidoran female. Uh, it was glowing. If this is worth 4,800, no, it's a not quite. If it was still worth 4,800, get... it would have been the the super size. Uh, but still, 1,600 experience is worth quite a bit. Kind of again, same vein as Raticate. Uh, the evolved Nidorans are just slightly lower catch rates, not by much, but 
ever so slightly. Yeah, but so Aras double blade excellence is solid. So if Route 10 was the great decider, so too is Rock Tunnel back to back. Kid Rocker getting the first and probably most important catch out of the out of the way. How many runners have we seen, especially oh, this round, gosh. miss out on Rhyhorn? Right, especially for Eevee, Rhyhorn is the only ride Pokemon that you have like access to at this point in the game. Thankfully, Pika does have a backup in evolving a Growlithe to Arcanine using a Firestone on Route 7. So even if you don't get Rhyhorn for Pikachu, it's still a hefty time loss, but not as big of a loss as it, as it is for Eevee. So Kid Rocker getting a Rhyhorn here, absolutely huge for him. Going to party match as soon as he gets these evolutions done, gonna bring that Rhyhorn into his party straight away. I don't know, I, I think I saw a runner get 302 without Rhyhorn, so it is... Uh, so I mean... Uh, to be fair, that runner was here, <laughs> so... <laughs> But you definitely want to see Rhyhorn. It just helps expedite the, the movement so much for Eevee. Yeah, and it's and it's such a great, um, when we do get into those forced double battles with J&J &J using the poison types, to have a rock ground as like our partner in that case uh, can help to save time than say using a sacrifice strat for that. Uh, Rhyhorn just has so many benefits. It's a much faster ride Pokemon than, say, uh, the XY Rhyhorn, uh, if you're familiar with those games. Much, much faster. I have not touched my... Oh, gosh, I don't remember the last time I played a DS game or 3DS game. Yeah, same. Shoutouts to Oras. Shoutouts to Oras. I mean, it's going to be... It's it's going to be raced at uh, RPG Limit Break. Yeah, uh, this week. excited for that. In fact, that's this week. Shoutouts to RPG Limit Break. Uh, Vermillion having a little bit of trouble with the Nidoran attack cycle, is able to get the throw out of the attack for the excellence. Uh, updates on catch trackers. Iron is just heading into Rock Tunnel with a catch count of 25. Kid Rocker getting a couple of those evolutions and is standing at a very solid 27. And Vermillion is trying to get their uh, trying to get their catches up over on Route 10 with now 21 catches. Uh, I'm gonna have to pay attention on the next catch. I could have sworn that I saw the Firo in his party was at level 18. That might have been a Bell Sprout. Not sure. I'd have to double check that as well. I hate seeing. I hate seeing Firo on Route 10. It's just like it's one of the most difficult catches. You almost never see anybody going for it unless they're having a bad run to begin with, and they're like, mm -hmm. well. <laughs> And you just Here take what go. you can get at that point. Also, Firo's hitbox is surprisingly large. My last race, I was heading straight down to the Lorelei cutscene, and the Firo's beak just kind of hyperextended and... <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that! It was literally the tip of its beak was just right there. I can't with these hitboxes sometimes, but... Vermillion heading into the Lorelei cutscene now. Just taking a look at his tracker. It hasn't gotten either Rattata or Eradicate yet. Has secured both Nidos, the Spiro, the Krabby, so possibly opting to just move on without it. So, in terms of the catch count, what do you like to see going into Rock Tunnel? What do you like to see coming out of Rock Tunnel? Because from just what I'm seeing, Iron and Kid Rock are in a pretty good spot. Uh, for Millie, mm -hmm. it's probably a little bit behind. Yeah, I tend to take a peek more along the lines of exiting tunnel. I know entering tunnel can be a little bit like. 50-50 depending on how many evolutions that you get before you enter Rock Tunnel. But I really like to see anywhere above 30. Like 30 or above, like 30 being like the low end for sure. Uh, 33 I would say is a pretty comfortable place to be at. Um, yeah, I like I like to say that average is probably 31, 32 for most cases. If you get to that 33, 34, 35 exiting tunnel, uh, you're typically very happy. You say, like, ah, I got everything. Most everything is evolved. Probably don't have to catch a whole lot in the late game. Um, but if you're under 30, you're, you're probably sweating a little bit. Uh, I, was oh, watching yeah. Head, I was watching Headstrong. Uh, I don't remember if it was this morning or if it was yesterday. Uh, but she had a 25 uh, tunnel exit. And I oh, was yeah. just like, what? Yeah, and oh, yeah. It was like, yeah, this runs bad. That's probably the absolute minimum I've ever seen. Yeah, it's it's rough seeing 
a two and a ten digit coming out of Brock Tunnel. But thankfully, at the very least, all three runners did get an instant Rhyhorn spawn. So gonna ride that all the way through Tunnel, gonna speed up their movement speed, Rhyhorn being a ride Pokemon. Uh, you can ride other Pokemon, i.e. Kangaskhan. Uh, some of those do not actually improve your movement speed whatsoever. You just do it for the fans in that section. In that case, oh, it's a Pidgeotto, I see. Different bird Pokemon. Feels slower in some cases. Oh yeah, 100%. And the, and the hitbox is bigger, but like Kangaskhan is the best, objectively, like from a fan standpoint, the best ride Pokemon. Uh, oh, yeah. If you've never seen it before, the partner Pikachu or Eevee actually sits in with the baby. It's so cute. Uh, other good ride Pokemon, uh, Snorlax. Ah, yes, uh, so you just cling onto its belly, I yeah. believe. <laughs> it just waddles around. And yeah, you were just literally, it's almost like you're hanging out for like dear life, just like onto its side. <laughs> Um, I'm always surprised that Dodrio is not as fast of a ride Pokemon as, uh, say, the anime uh, yeah, con intended it to be. Yeah, considering its base speed in the game. I just, but, remember, uh... I just remember that one episode of the anime. Where oh, yeah, where, like, crazy. Ash rides Rapidash and Ponyta and the Electro yeah, Goods and, like, boom the at the Do beginning. It was like, no one can beat my Do Dodrio, and it's, like, super fast. I believe that there is a a, a character that rides an electrode and just like balances on it like <laughs> yeah i i like want to say that ball. like that dodrio trying to like rig the race so that the electrode like goes boom at the start and causes a whole bunch of mayhem or something that's Could be right working. man i love the gen one of the anime deserves a rewatch shout out to gen it's one anime shout out to gen one anime remember the the ss and sinking episode and they like look they look out the window and there's just fish. It like it's not magic carp or goldine or a gold duck. It's just fish. <laughs> fish are canon in the Pokemon universe. It's, it's just so interesting that like, you know, back then it wasn't when they highlighted one Pokemon, it was like one at a time. It's not as colorful and you know, world building that the, the new episodes of the anime are. There was just fish outside the window. And I remember laughing at that, being like, ah, yeah, the old days. But better one liners, that's for sure. Oh, for sure. Uh, Iron and Kid Rocker finishing up their catch routes in Rock Tunnel, Iron grabbing a Cubone, Kid Rocker grabbing a Machop, and I believe that basically covers it for the both of them, getting everything that they could ever want aside from the, the rare char. And then Vermilion, uh, let's take a look at what he still needs. Uh, could use a Zubat, could use a, Ch could use a Cubone, has already gotten, or could also use a Graveler, actually. So still looking out for, for three, three more Rock Tunnel encounters for him. Pikachu and Nidoking for Iron already being level 27 and 28, respectively. This is a very, very large amount of XP. Uh, at this at this point in the run, uh, all plus, thanks to plus the great stats. On yes, Pikachu definitely. Too. This Pikachu could. I have I have calcs for this. This Pikachu could definitely. I'll look at it later. Plus four the Persian. Uh, I just saw I just saw our first power of love on Vermilion screen. Oh my! Oh. Ooh. I didn't. I did not see what happened. I just saw the love icon and I was like, "Yo, power of love." Um, I'm gonna, so, yeah, gonna assume that like got crit or something gets brought down to one HP and then super potions right after. But as you we were saying, T Pat, power of love. Yeah, so power of love is something I wasn't anticipating on explaining until a bit later. This in the early. Movie. It usually comes up uh, around the Jesse and James fight and afterwards. Um, so at certain friendship levels, uh, you start getting some boons and benefits, uh, and it can happen for any Pokemon, not just the. Uh, partner Pokemon, though they get the highest friendship. Um, typically, when you start seeing the turnarounds, which is using a super effective move, and your Pokemon's like, praise me, um, at that same friendship level, they have a 20% chance to also expel uh, status effects like poisoning or paralysis. But, even at the lower friendship levels, they can live getting knocked out, and not even via, like, Focus Sash, not like from full, from any health. 
Um, at the 100 base friendship level, uh, you just have a straight 1% chance uh, to surviving a knockout. I think it's one or five. Uh, and then at the 125 level, uh, it increases to, I think it's 10%. And then when you get to the higher levels, it's like 15% to live a knockout. So to see it this early in Rock Tunnel, A, you usually are not in that position to begin with, but it was also a very low percentage chance that ended up panning out for Vermillion. Exactly. Definitely don't want to see Eevee going down, especially considering I'm not entirely sure what Vermillion's revive count is at right now. You do get three revives handed to you by your rival uh, going into the underground path along Route 6. You can pick up a couple others along the way, but you don't have a lot of backups at this point if uh, Eevee or another partner goes down once or twice. I wanted to ask you, what was, what's the earliest you've ever seen Power of Love in this game? Uh, definitely on the Starmie fight. Um, you can Power of Love a hit from Starmie. You don't get the same expel status at that point in the game, but you can live on one if Starmie were to say crit you with Scald. I have seen clips of somebody getting crit by Scald, living on Power of Love, getting burn, but not having enough friendship to expel the burn, and then Pikachu just dies anyway <laughs> due to I burn think damage. It's one of these runners. I think it was Kid Rocker that got it was it was either Kid Rocker or Iron, I I think. Yeah, not sure. I think it, it was also in the, the trailer for the, the Let's Go tournament as well. It's, it's just so funny. It's like you get crit and you're like, no, and then you live and you're like, yeah. Yeah, and, you and then you get burned. burned. And you're, like, and you're like, no. no. <laughs> you get the same effect anyways. Uh I I've not had it on the Misty fight, but I've had a really weird one where on Rival 3, the Bell Sprouts power of love. I'm lived. sorry. Yeah, the Bell Sprouts power of love lived uh, because I did not outspeed the Pidgeotto and it wing attacked the Bell Sprout and it toughed it out so I wouldn't feel bad. <laughs> and I was like, yo, that is a weird one. Shoutouts um, to I think Zion marking Bell Sprout as the walking Pokemon to get more friendship levels to boost power of love. <laughs> Yeah, power of uh, the the friendship mechanics. It's it's pretty standard in most of the games. Like you use, you level up. You use vitamins or rare candies, uh, and in many cases, X items as well. All boost uh, friendship by a certain amount. It typically is more when you're at a lower friendship, and then it kind of flattens out at the higher friendship. Uh, but having your Pokemon out in the overworld every, I think it's like this abstract 128 steps, it gets a 50-50 shot to roll a friendship. So it's mm -hmm. never, it's it's a little bit more fluid for Eevee and Pikachu when those higher friendship levels start occurring. Um, one of our competitors, Razor's Edge, said that he got turnarounds as early as Rock Tunnel once. Yeesh. Because you just, you just roll so many of those 50-50s that all of a sudden you've hit that 150 friendship in Rock Tunnel, which you usually don't see until hideouts. Um, that is definitely the earliest I've ever heard of turnarounds occurring. Um, so when you put a Pokemon like Bellsprout out uh, and you mark it as like a following Pokemon, it could start gaining friendship that way. Ride Pokemon like Rhyhorn and Rapidash uh, will get friendship kind of in that 50-50 shot, but Starmie, does not because it's never appearing in the overworld so that's why these starmie friendship levels are very static but pikachu and the ride and eevee and the ride pokemon have a little bit more fluidity when it comes to when they hit those friendship thresholds and as you can see here iron and kid rocker entering the the tower rival fight iron finishing out very cleanly uh Nido King already at level 29. Going to pay a little bit of closer attention to his attack stat. Oh, that is an awful attack stat. For, you would, even I knew that that could be a little bit higher. Yeah. We'll be able to one-shot, or you won't need to use an X attack on, say, the, the Rattata uh, Voltorb fight in Hideout. You can just barrel through with a couple of Poison Depths. Would have liked to see a little bit higher attack. Maybe could have secured a plus two Poison Jab on the Hypno that's coming up but making it through just fine. Interestingly enough, uh, I noted that Iron's Pika stats at 28, attack and special attack are 70 and 69. That is so wow. huge for 28. 
gonna easily just shred through hideout and the tower of jesse and james fight no when problem I next, when i next see the ev stats for kid rocker i'll uh be sure to take a peek at that <laughs> vermilion made me a little bit nervous taking those last two rotators uh it's typically not the usual way that you take it but ended up working out just fine yeah totally we fine there catch Catch count is still close. It's Iron with 31 and Kid Rocker with 32. And again, Iron with the slight advantage in terms of plot. So this is still wire to wire. They went through Route 10 and Rock Tunnel, and they are still this close in terms of their progression. Yeah, this is insane. We're almost halfway through the run now, and it's still anybody's game between these two. Vermillion just falling a little bit behind. Uh, is only level 24 here, about to hit 25 on this Vulpix. So a little bit concerned for his XP, also kind of concerned for his catch route, noting that uh, only at 28 caught right now, hasn't quite found a Zubat yet. Uh, so we'll see what adjustments Vermillion decides to make as he continues forward past Hideout and Tower. I think Vermillion has made some great strides in this game, as many runners have done. Oh, uh, absolutely. And at, and at this run, as he catches a, uh, a Zubat here as well, um, it's you're starting to feel a little bit of, of some of the, the growing pains of Let's Go. That's, that's a gamer throw right there. Getting oh, great. very nice. Great. You, got, you, have to, you have to applaud that for sure. Uh, but this is something that even I remember at this level. When you start getting close to like 310 pace, you start trying to go faster and then you start falling a little short on EXP. You're a little short on catches in the attempt to try to go faster with the game. So there is a little bit of some growing pains that we're witnessing, but it's showcasing that this is something that, you know, they've taken very seriously and they're trying to improve at a uh, high level. A 123 tunnel exit with 29 Pokemon. I mean, you could easily say this is PB pace. I mean, that's not yeah. too far away. For somebody who has the best time of a 321, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's This right. is honestly a great pace run, but you're going to see a little bit of those, you know, the growing pains of trying to go faster, like physically trying to go faster uh, play out. But right now, as long as they keep moving and they keep punching at it, um, I think they'll have a great chance at even getting a PB, even if it isn't a, a game win or a match win here. Yeah, for sure. Iron taking the the long approach to the Route 7 Firestone, going to be using that post hideout, um, post tower to evolve that Growlithe into a very fast ride Pokemon in the form of Arcanine, as we had alluded to earlier. Uh, one extra catch under under Iron's belt there. Uh, might go for a Pidgey or P or Pidgeotto on Route 8, we'll have to see. Uh, does still have Pidgey Pidgeotto marked right now. Uh, I don't think Kid Rocker needs anything aside from... Oh, already has an Abra, never mind. So it doesn't need anything on on that Route 8 grass patch. Yeah, and an Abra actually did spawn on the very oh, far, gosh. Uh, right end, too. Like, just the tail of it. I don't know uh, if Iron noticed I that. Spotted. He does not have... Uh, does not have an Abra currently, so unfortunately missing out it was, on that extra. I saw it on Kid Rocker's screen. Oh, that, okay, gotcha. That the Abra split like the little tail. Um, before we get into the meat and and potatoes of, of Hideout, because it could be done <laughs> in a thousand different ways, just want to reference that, like, Iron and Kid Rocker are, they're on pace. Like, they're pushing each other hard um, and are going pretty fast. I think this is going to be respectable times, and I'm looking at the times, the winning times from the lower bracket already. Uh, Aspect uh, topping that with a 305.51 uh, has already solidified a pot two ranking. But on the bubble is Sandy Beach with a 308.20. Do you mm -hmm. think that either Iron or Kid Rocker is going to be able to top that to get into pot two? Ooh, um, it's... At this pace, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, like assuming they keep up the pace, keep up with with the, the game mechanics, the catch routes, the decision making, being able to be quick on their feet with all of those combined, uh, they're they're gunning for it. They're which, absolutely Which would be a big PB for both of them too. Yes, absolutely. But yeah, Rock, Rocket Hideout coming. We just saw both players do their synchronizing, which is just gonna guarantee modest nature on all wild Pokemon for the rest of the game, which includes Starmie. Thank goodness we have only seen one runner forget about <laughs> that and it didn't punish them all that much. not punished technically not optimal punished. 
and the uh, and the Eevees will teach Glitzy Glow, which is the psychic move, just in time to fight a whole bunch of poison type Pokemon in this section, which is why Glitzy Glow is so important. Uh, secondary effect, not super useful, but actually does help out on the Jesse and James fights against sets of Light Screen. And it typically, you get that up before you get Sludge Bombed, which does help you get a little bit of reduction in damage. Um, but it can be done, this can be done in so many different ways, especially on the EV side of things, where there have even been now Nido King strats uh, borrowed from the Pikachu side uh, that are now viable, or you could just use the EV and just crush everything. Did you teach Glitzy Glow over Sizzly side, or did you teach it over Buzzy Buzz? Both options are viable. And there are some fights that you can literally do four different ways, depending on how like your EXP and your stats and what Pokemon you're using uh, are all laid out. So instead of trying to explain each and every strat, we'll just see which one they choose and go from there. Right. Pika more has more of along the lines of a tier list of, of strategies to employ. Obviously, Pika really, really wants that Nido King for, for maximum output, maximum efficiency. You'll see here on this Hypno fight that you'll, Iron's going to 2C this with Nido King and Pikachu. Uh, if the Nido King's attack is high enough, you can opt to X attack the Nido King or the Pika if you have a plus attack Pikachu. Uh, and hit poison jab. Ooh, good flinch. good flinch. Going opting instead of hitting the zippy zap as you normally do, going to opt to go for the headbutt there. Got the 30% flinch, gets a free heal off in battle, and just finishing off with Pikachu. Really good adaptation from Iron here. Yeah, if Kid Rocker were level 28, uh, would have been able to teach double edge for EV uh, just in time. Ooh, a little bit of an incorrect uh, puzzle here. Uh, it's going to lose him just a little bit of time. Uh, if you're level 28, you can double edge that Hypno, and as a two controller fight, he was not, so he also went for the uh, double controllered headbutt, tried to went for the flinch as well. I think Ken Rocker got a little confused, maybe thinking a puzzle ahead. Perhaps. Of how, that, uh, of how that works. I do that all the time. I'm usually thinking, like, oh, let me, let me, like, do this fight ahead, like, and be like, oh. I need to X attack here instead of X special attack. Whoops. Maybe a little bit too further down the notes than intended. Vermillion uh, didn't quite see how the Clefairy fight went, but assuming since the EB was at good health, didn't get trolled too hard by Metronome. This is such an interesting fight because I think this Raditz of Voltorb fight is the fight you can do in the most different ways. Hmm. Um, for, for Iron, it's just if you are high enough level uh, you could probably just poison jab both, though the Voltorb is a bit of a more difficult range. Uh, did not get it, but oh, does get poison, it with the poison from the poison jab. Calculated, which is excellent. Gets the uh, two turn. Meanwhile, on the Eevee side, because this is a plus special attack Eevee, one controlling this fight with with bouncy bubble is the most optimal way. However, did not hit the Voltorb range uh, for the similar reasons. Uh, it's actually funny enough that you want to three-turn Bouncy Bubble that fight, uh, which is more efficient than two-turn Double Edging that fight if you're level 28, because if you're Double Edging, you typically need to heal before and after, and those two menus add up to more than just outright three-turning the fight with Bouncy Bubble. And oh, then there's a so interesting. variety of other strats. You can Nido King it, you can two-controller it, <laughs> you can still do the three-turn headbutts. It's Again, there's so many different ways that you can do uh, that fight in particular, but even these fights uh, have different strats. As you see, a two controller Grimer, sometimes you just one controller uh, Glit or yeah, one controller Glitzy Glow uh, can be fine. Yeah, one interesting note that I'll point out for, for Iron specifically on that fight uh, with Pikachu and Nido King, you you saw Iron X special attack the Pikachu to guarantee the plus two Thunderbolts with. Iron's specific Pikachu, Helping Hand Thunderbolts is actually guaranteed with Iron Special Attack. Um, not in the notes, something that you just have to calc out yourself to save a couple extra seconds there. Uh, but if your Special Attack is high enough, if your Pikachu is level 28, you can definitely Helping Hand to, to save that extra X item. Someone had mentioned, I think it, I think it was Sandy, that it's just like, sometimes you want to use collapsible notes. <laughs> <laughs> because it can get it can get so complicated 
Um, because again, unlike any other Pokemon speedrun, at this point in the game, like, yes, the IVs are set, they're all 31, but the natures could be different, the AVs could be different, your experience could be different, and all of that can matter, and knowing the right situation at just the right time is part of the decision-making aspect that makes this such an incredible speedrun. Right, as you had mentioned earlier, like, Eevee at level 25, 28 for a boat rival is a thing that you can one see, but you just have to like do the do the calculations yourself to be able to save that extra time save. So putting in not only the, the effort to like practice the game, getting good at movement, getting good at menuing, getting good at decision making, but also like the research outside the game can be equally as important for making sure that your run goes as smoothly, as fast as you want it to be. So when I asked Etchy about that, you know, long, long time ago, so I was like, how would you even know to one controller that fight? Because it never came up in anyone's notes ever. And he's like, sometimes you just mess around in the showdown calculator and just see what stupid stuff you can do. It's like, oh, what, what does it take to one controller this? Like, what level and attack do I need to be to one shot that Pidgeotto? And at some point, you, you just do the dumb calcs and you say, all right, this level. Uh, for example, like I did, I just did that for that first Jesse and James fight. I'm like, okay, well, what level do I need to be to skip the X attack on Eevee? Uh, it turns out it's like 23, which is like, okay, this is stupid, but but also kind of feasible. But if you get a massive chancy, all of a sudden you're gonna find yourself in a level 23 situation or like 21 with plus attack becomes viable, and you're like, oh, okay. I mean, I've seen. I've seen Pikachu leave Mount Moon at 21 before. I mean, how, how many people... Mm -hmm. You you have, would definitely know. Yeah. Got into Misty with Thunderbolt. Yep. That was... I think that was the very first practice race that I did with you all, is I got a super-sized Chansey in Moon. And after that, it was just like, all right, well, now I have to know because this, this situation could, in fact, happen in a later time. Yeah, and the earlier that you do those dumb calcs and that you know, or you catalog that somebody else did that, can benefit you when you find yourself in those weird situations. Uh, we are seeing Jesse and James now on both of these runners uh, for the Pikachu side. Oh, oh no, the poison! The... Oh, no, no power of love! Eevee going down. It's really, really unfortunate for Kid Rocker. Uh, unfortunately, getting not getting enough healing from that bouncy bubble on the Arbok. Sludge Poison does knock it out. Going to have to finish this fight with the, the Rhyhorn, X attacking it to, to draw run as Pikachu normally does in this scenario. Uh, but just typically, really, really unfortunate. Yeah, typically that situation only happens if you get what's called quad targeted. So basically the Ekans and, or the Arbok and the Weezing both target the Eevee twice on both turns. And on this fight, you're actually a bit more likely to live than say the, the, uh, the next Jesse and James fight where right. they come at a couple higher level. Um, and the, the strategies crit, simply don't get unlucky. <laughs> yeah, if you get poisoned, if you get crit by one of those attacks, either the poison jab or the sludge bomb, which then crits through the light screen effect, uh, can be very, very scary. Yeah, Iron entering the Archer 1 fight, not as long as the, the infamous Archer 2 fight. Uh, recalling that Iron's Pikachu is a quiet nature, so is minus speed. Uh, opts to headbutt the Weezing first to try to get the flinch off. Unfortunately, doesn't quite get that happening. Uh, is going to need to heal the Nidoking on this turn. Uh, and hopefully the Golbat doesn't target Pikachu here due to it outspeeding Pikachu. Uh, if it does, Iron might decide to heal out of battle just to make sure that the Persian has no shot of uh, of deleting Pikachu with a crit slash. Uh, thankfully, Air Slash goes on to Nidoking, should, so should be able to go into the the Giovanni one fight with no problem whatsoever. Yeah, typically you see the runners here, and this is the case um, for both Iron and Kid Rocker, is that you still want to heal like the Nidoking or the Rhyhorn if it is chip damage. Uh, because the death animations can be kind of slow and and obviously slow is slow. Um, so you're usually burning an extra super potion um, like we'll, we'll see right here out of uh, Kid Rocker is, oh, like you're going to KO this Weezing. Um, actually, I'll just head. Oh my 
Wow, that is so fast. So oh my slow. god. Speed, I did not know. <laughs> Today 51 I speed. I'm looking up that wheezing speed right now in the trainer data. I did not know that that wheezing was going to outspeed the <laughs> the Rhyhorn. Uh, in this case, the Rhyhorn is going to take an L here. Uh, yeah, that... Usually, usually you would try to circumvent those situations. Yeah, that Weezing um, has 51 healing. speed, and Eevee just oh. leveled up and got to, got to 51, 51 speed. Yeah. Goodness. And this is making me more and more nervous of potentially running minus speed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so typically in Eevee PB attempts, you don't take minus attack, you don't take minus special attack, you don't take minus speed. Most of the notes won't even account for those situations because you won't find yourself in those situations. And that could also include things like uh, the Jesse and James fights. The If you're minus special attack, the Weezings at plus four tend to be ranges, and usually bad ranges. Yeah, that's you want to get that Weezing off the floor as soon as possible before you burn through more supers. I think Kid Rocker only down to maybe two or three super potions right now, so dangerously low on healing items. Especially considering that that slash crit Eevee before it could get a sizzly slide off. So going to have to burn another super potion here. Uh, probably going to so pick up a backup hyper in tower. Uh, Iron getting through the fight just fine. Pikachu getting set up to plus six with three X attacks, taking out that Persian, followed up by a double kick helping hand to secure the KO on the very high level Rhyhorn. Remember that we are moderately underleveled. Oh no, Vermillion's Eevee also going down oh. in the J&J fight. So these Eevee runners are having a time with a Justin bit. and James today. Yeah, meanwhile, the, how the, uh, this is the mo this is probably the most modern version of the Giovanni fight for the Eevee side is you end up teaching Glitzy Glow over Buzzy Buzz instead of Sizzly Slide to keep Sizzly sp Slide specifically for this Giovanni fight. Sizzly Slide obviously always burns, and the burn effect does still take effect even if uh, even if you get a crit. Mm -hmm. um, so a crit slash would still do half as much damage under the effects of burn. Um, so you'll see a, a plus two setup, get that sizzly slide down. And even if you get fake out into a slash crit, you tend to live, you would just have to take that extra turn to heal in most cases. Usually if you're minus defense, it's a pit. Uh, on the scarier side. The worst case scenario is if the Persian just slash crits turn one during your setup, because then you have no way of applying the burn before you get knocked out. In that case, you just have to bail out by summoning the second controller. The right, older cause... version of the fight was the uh, the Graveler Boom strats, because there's no way that Persian can do anything to rock types. Um, so you would just plus four and then self-destruct. Uh, but again, the... Uh, the death animation is a little bit on the sluggish side. So still using Eevee ends up being the best case scenario. Right, you just have to make sure that you don't get caught in that one in 24 heal loop. And you're totally fine. Simply do not get unlucky. Iron and Kid Rocker here teaching uh, Sky Dash, uh, one of the uh, secret techniques in the game, getting to fly over to Lavender Town for the the final starter segment of the run. Uh, this is Pikachu and Eevee's last hurrah here. Uh, going to go into the Jesse and James fight in a couple of minutes. To lure or not to lure Tower? That is that the question. Yeah, the very the very divisive question among the community. I do not lure tower unless I need at least two catches in tower, in which case I will lure. Um, but just due to the the way of the floor's layout, there's not a lot of room that Pokemon can spawn. Usually, if you see anything spawn, it's going to be on the last floor because of that giant area where the the Cubo and Marowak cutscene is. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, T Pat? I I've been just not luring because a you know, that's an extra couple inputs and, you know, when you're trying to go super fast, um, you can just save that. Plus, not luring tower means you can skip the super lure pickup uh, on Route 17 as well. So that's just kind of how I do it. And sometimes Ghastly's just show up, as you see on Iron Screen. And sometimes they, sometimes you, when you lure and it doesn't show up, it feels worse. 
because at least when you don't lure and you don't see it, you're like, well, I didn't lure, so... Right, so you've saved you know, that time, you saved that resource than it, than it is on the yeah. game. Uh, so yeah, I've been not luring recently. Um, I have been burned by it now because I've I've had Ghastly like on my tracker twice, and then I didn't lure and I didn't get Ghastly, and it's like, well, you're gonna make me lure next time, aren't you? But I don't really want to. Yeah, Kid Rocker, passing the heal pad with ease. Um, sometimes you can get caught up on that. Uh, there's a term called double heal pad. Uh, if you if your movement is just a little bit off, uh, sometimes that triggers twice and uh, eats up a couple extra seconds of your time. Uh, but as they go up through tower, neither Iron nor Kid Rocker, I believe, picked up a stack of Ultra Balls in the hideout. So we will see them more than likely pick up the stack of three Ultra Balls behind Chandler Jennifer that Kid Rocker is fighting right now to bring their Ultra Ball count up to a total of eight as you get five from Ace Trainer Sophia in Rock Tunnel. Just to finish up the rest of their cash route, I believe Iron has a minimum of five catches to go, each of them with an evolution. And then Kid Rocker has one, two, three, four, also, uh, Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six catches six. to go. Yeah, I guess he's still missing uh, the ghastly. I was actually just looking at that. <laughs> you and I kind of have a great feel of like, you know, once you're out of Rock Tunnel, you know, you really know what your catch route is. Uh, and if you're really far ahead, you start eliminating things like Psyduck and Ghastly and either Coffee or Primer if you can. And try to just keep the Staryu, Ponyta, and Doduo uh, as your catch route. Oh, I just saw Vermilion's party. He has three out of six Pokemon fainted right now on Giovanni. I don't exactly know what happened for him to get into the situation, uh, but considering that both both Krabby, Rhyhorn, plus one are downed, Vermilion only has one revive remaining, and if he wants to get those evolutions going, he's going to... Oh, well, the heal pad will heal them anyway, but just a little bit unfortunate that uh, not able to get through here also noting uh, that bell spout is still a thing yeah i'm i'm thinking he may have forgotten to x attack on this because mm. just looking at that much damage it looks like he was only doing half of what uh they would have normally wanted to do yeah a little a little bit of improvising um again maybe not quite as familiar as you'd like to be um with certain sections and again a hideout can be so daunting with, as we mentioned, how many different ways you can do all of these Exactly. Strats. So if you're not super familiar, and if you're not obviously very well versed in how to do those strats, sometimes little things can slip through the cracks, like X attacking on Giovanni. Uh, it looks like Vermillion- just feels very automatic. But for new runners, sometimes it's like, hey, maybe you should just slow down just a little bit and make sure that you get to all those little details uh, just right. Uh, Vermillion confirming in chat that it was more on the unlucky side. We had talked about the, the slash, slash crit turn crit. one, and it does look like that is what happened with Vermillion. So bailing out with a 2C, and then Persian unfortunately getting a, getting a KO on the, the partner Pokemon that came out to sort of bail, bail out the situation. Which, which in that case is absolutely correct, and it's something that might not be uh, written in the notes, where it's like, oh, you know, if this happens you know summon second controller because he got really unlucky um so that intuition definitely was correct in that situation yeah you're saying like oh, okay you have so many pokemon that are fainted right now but if that was really your only option yeah you take it, it you take it to progress the run okay. uh iron's pikachu did get a uh, power of love uh as well probably expelling some poison on the final jesse and james fight and the final fight that the partner Pokemon will uh, engage in. Yeah, Pikachu normally setting up a plus two special attack with sacrificing the Growlithe as it to avoid getting double targeted and then following up with a heal, exploding the poison, as you mentioned with Power of Love. And then due to Iron's absolutely jacked special attack stat is able to guarantee wow. the, the Thunderbolts helping hand one hit KO onto the Weez and cleaning out this Justin James fight with ease. Yeah, that is a very clean JJ3 for a Pika runner because I've been watching a lot of them and 
this fight can be just so painful. It's usually what a four turn fight. Yeah, four four turn fight at well, not at worst, but theoretically three two four turn, depending on how high your XP is on Pikachu, how well your special attack is at this point in the game. Uh, but that doesn't matter that anymore. Yeah, I did notice that Kid Rocker did get the uh, Ghastly, um, but it is still some pretty tight catch routing uh, for the end. So again, to reiterate, it looks like both of these runners, Iron and Kid Rocker, that are about to go into the uh, Route 17 the Cycling Road, which is now deemed Pokemon Road because there are no bikes in this game, uh, will need Ponyta, Doduo, and Psyduck, all three of them, They've both already cleared a Pidgey Pidgeotto, so they won't have to worry about that. So they're looking for those three things. Uh, they will both have to catch the Coughing and Grimer, respectively, in Pokemon Mansion, which only leaves, um, as, at the moment, they both do not have Tentacool marked, which is a good thing. Yeah, Tentacool is a being... notoriously bad Pokemon. Yeah, if you're not silverizing it, you're nabbing it to slow down its uh, its movement pattern. Likes to go left and right consistently. I waited for Tentacool to, to attack for upwards of what feels like years. So being able to mark that off your tracker is always a good feeling to have going into this end game string of catches. Usually you will not, you'll have it as like a bonus catch uh, on most people's trackers just right away. Um, because it is typically something you do not want to have to catch. However, it is like the most reliable late game catch in terms of its spawning. But obviously with it being such a bad catch rate and a forced one controller catch, uh, it is something you typically want to avoid. But in this situation, they're going to go into Route 17 and say they do get Ponyta and they do get Doduo, but they don't see a Psyduck. In this situation, you typically just say, okay, I didn't get Psyduck, but I'm not waiting for it because waiting can lead to a lot of waiting. You just say, okay, I'm going to cut my losses and go for Tentacool as kind of that last option. Uh, hopefully it's not for both of their sakes. Um, just because, again, consistent spawn, but not as consistent of a catch. Right. Uh, Vermelo having a little bit of trouble getting that Ghastly to, to stand still, but does manage to get that Ghastly catch okay, which means all three runners have a Ghastly to evolve into Haunter for those two catches. Uh, speaking of Tentacle, uh, due to Vermilion only having 31 caught at this point, is going to need to go for that Tentacle, assuming that nothing extra shows up before then. Uh, so gonna have to deal with that when the time comes but for now making his way through a pokemon Ooh, tower trio first for kid rock uh, not oh, exactly all, what you want to see get all the way down to the elixir and that was the only pokemon seen so far yeah there's uh, only two more on his, on his screen yeah only two more grass patches to go for the uh, at least triad of catches okay. there's a pony tub oh rapid oh, ass thought a... about it okay regular oh, pony okay tub. Stop, stops in place, probably saw the Ponyta panicked a little bit, bringing out the second controller, but both Iron Kid Rocker getting in. Instant Ponyta, definitely what you want to see for Eevee. Uh, Iron is probably going to just keep the Pony in his party until Mansion, where he'll do the, the very large menu, evolving starting into Starmie and doing final party management. Kid Rocker, on the other hand, likely going to uh, just go ahead, grab that Pony, throw a Rare Candy into it, and... Uh, use that over the Rhyhorn as it is one of the the fastest rides in the game. The uh, I wanted to mention that uh, as you saw Iron kind of pause, talk to the uh, uh, talk to the Arcanine in this case. Um, it is kind of weird if you hit the A button while you're on a ride Pokemon, you're technically going to talk to it. Uh, if you also press down on the left stick, uh, same effect, it's just like the A button. Uh, I personally have disabled that, uh, mm -hmm. that input for that exact reason. Like if you panic and you hit the stick a little bit too hard, you press into it, you can accidentally hit the A button, which usually just costs you the, oh, I talked to my ride Pokemon, with something like Alexa. If you you're trying to make that skip. Yeah, you could accidentally talk to Alexa uh, if you panic and press down on your left stick. It is something that uh, I didn't disable for a while, and after each run, I get to Alexa and be like, I didn't disable my my L press, and then Randall was like, "Did you disable it yet?" And I'm like, "Oh, not yet." Um, so it it took me some reminding to to do. 
Yeah, so take notes, chat. If you decide to speedrun this game, uh, unbind your left stick click or right stick click, depending if you are a left stick or a right stick enjoyer. Maybe you're a Pokeball Plus enjoyer. Who knows? Don't have to deal with stick clicks then, hopefully. <laughs> Right, though, duo for Iron Screen. Oh, there's a side up going back yep. up for Kid Rocker. That's an excellent spawn to see. Very, so very in solid. Case, in this case, again, now that you got Ponyta and side up, if you don't end up seeing a do duo, you could now leave. It adds a little bit of extra risk into some other fights that you want do duo really as a safer partner. But again, that tentacle being a catch in the back that's possible does mean that you don't have to wait on the route. So. At least he got two out of the three things that you've seen. Still a big patch of grass to go. Yeah, it is a bit of reward risk, so to speak. The reward for skipping Dodo being you save that time, especially with uh, the race being so close between Iron and Kid Rocker as it is. Maybe you just take the risk and go for the Tentacool and hope for a really good attack cycle and just kind of blitz your way through Route 17 to progress more of the story. Yeah, and the risk with uh, with Doduo not being the partner. Ooh, how about this for Iron? Was about to leave. D summoned second controller, and the side I spawned immediately. So Iron does have all three of his catches here. Yeah, uh, just to update you, um, unfortunately, Verm Vermillion is going to uh, DNF and take a forfeit here due to a combination of just. Uh, maybe being a little bit more behind than he would have liked during the race, as well as a couple of technical difficulties on his end. Uh, so very unfortunate, but also, as we've mentioned, like Vermillion having put up such a great fight in this run, as well as improving so much over the course of, over the tournaments, being able to get a tournament PB in a 321, very, very respectable. Uh, just unfortunate that unable to close out this race today, but GG's to Vermilion, as this is now a two-horse race. Yeah, definitely a lot of positives. I mean, you saw you saw such a fight to go fast, and sometimes just the mentality of I gotta go fast. I'm not gonna wait for things. I'm just gonna go fast. And you saw you saw some of the growing pains of uh, low catch count that we saw, but now you got that knowledge, you got that experience in the bank. Um, so when we see some PB attempts from Vermillion, I'm sure that we're going to see some some very great times um, if they do decide to continue with the game. Yeah, and Vermillion joining us right now. Hello. Wish that you could have finished out the race, but understandable with with the circumstances. But GG's to you. Um, how, what are your thoughts uh, coming out of this race? Uh, so... Um, I was kind of just having some weird technical issues earlier, so I was like, okay, this is kind of weird, but, you know, it's the beginning of the game and everything. I just had little problems here and there, and, and my um, I think my capture card was cutting off because I was, like, moving stuff, cleaning uh, a lot of things. And it's unfortunate it happened, but not angry or anything. It was just, you know, stuff happens, and these two runners are playing really well. <laughs> Anyways, so, I mean, I'm happy I was able to take place in this tournament. It was really fun, and I'm excited to watch that in this race. I wanted to ask about your uh, thoughts on the tournament. I mean, did you ever think that um, you'd A, compete in something like this, and B, you actually got a win in the last round. So um, just what was your overall thoughts of the tournament and being able to even make it this far? You know, I really, really enjoy this type of format of um, events. It's like something I've always wanted to do, uh, like I've done in the past for other games. And when I saw uh, this happen, uh, funny enough, the story about how I started doing this was because I went to GDQ and some of the Pokemon runners were like, yo, I'll teach you how to do this. And I was like, sure. And uh, I entered the tournament and everything. So it was really, really fun. I really like the, the format. Everything's really cool. People are very nice and they're really passionate about this game so it's sick to see i can definitely say being at gdq this uh this past may and june that's uh when when we announced this we were all so hyped about it and uh, i don't know if you were there uh for that giant race that we had in the practice room <laughs> um, to just see so many people there with so many runners i think there was eight of us like lined up um tvs back to back uh, all in the practice room with a massive crowd. I can tell you as a participant in that was so heartwarming that it wasn't just like two of us just like sitting nose down, like just doing something, but to, to feel that excitement and camaraderie 
of the players and the viewers together um that was obviously very special for me and, and hopefully it was for you too to 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 know that that energy was certainly present in that environment oh yeah definitely it was so cool seeing like everyone just like grinding the runs and doing that big race i saw a little bit of it but um I just remember like people just grinding that whole weekend. I was like, this is this a tournament's gonna be like a real deal. It's gonna be really cool. People are gonna try their best to do their best and love it. Love love this type of format and everything. It's so, really funny when you know that the guy that's playing Scarlet and Violet for GDQ is still just playing Let's Go. <laughs> <laughs> that tells you anything. It, it was high, yeah. Like why not? Like everyone's it's the it's the mood, you know. It's the vibe. Everyone's just grinding this out and having a blast everyone else so sick we're gonna see Love star it. use right here kid rocker cp is 1026 and iron's got a 1065 just to see them there at the same time uh so are you gonna continue uh trying to grind for a uh, better pb yourself now post tournament yeah definitely it's uh it's been weird because i haven't had that much time to practice as much because uh, i've been kind of busy this summer but uh, I really want to sit down and try my best to get better at this run. I just started <laughs> switching to the advanced notes and everything, and uh, I think I made a lot of good adjustments overall. I think something I like doing in runs is like, well, this, this thing didn't work out so well, so I know like what I can do to back it up, you know. And, and decision making like that is what I like in speedrunning a lot. So, yeah, we were noticing that you were maybe taking it a little bit, like a little bit faster than maybe you normally would have going through like Route 10 and Tunnel. Um, and then even though you were maybe a little bit behind on catches, making those adjustments on the fly to kind of just make up for those. So like, as t was like mentioning, those are sort of like the growing pains uh, that like Let's Go Runners kind of, kind of encounter as you start to realize that like, oh, how am I supposed to go faster? Do I like go faster on catches? What can I skip? How do I balance my XP? All of those things combine and we really saw that through your run today. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, generally when I'm like, playing a run or getting better run i usually take it slow because it's like you know you're obviously not the best um at the moment you know you want to take it slow and then get better build the fundamentals and everything so but when i it was when i was in this race i was like okay i'm competing against people and i need to play fast you know and then but and that kind of shot me in the foot because it's like not something i've not used to in general so but it was it was uh it, it taught me a lot though a lot of a lot of these runs and all the mistakes i made in general they always teach me a lesson so for the future, I know I'll do a lot better, <laughs> for sure. For sure, yeah, for be, sure. Just being in that situation, not like now you know, it's just like whoa, like yeah. I'm right, like this was a big step, and you know maybe I tripped on that hurdle today, but now you know how high that hurdle is. Exactly, and, and yeah. what it's going to take. So yeah, just like your positive attitude over this is just it's infectious. Like I can't help but smile <laughs> right now, knowing that. Uh, that you've definitely caught the bug and, and <laughs> you yeah it's the so bug. fun yeah it's fun it's a really fun run it's uh like uh, i started running um another jrpg recently Final Fantasy Ten, and i didn't really think i would enjoy running runs like this long but i really enjoyed doing this run because there's so many like different like aspects like that you can just mess up and or you can just get better at and it's like there's always like a way to get better so i'm excited for like that that part of my journey in this game it's gonna, be, it's gonna be hype. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad that you're you're gonna stick around with it at least for a little while longer. Can't wait to look forward to what times you come up with, what strategies you employ as uh, as you continue with Let's Go. So you mean you're, you mean you're not gonna get into randomizers like uh, two <laughs> are in this tournament? <laughs> you know, I have, I have two shout outs for uh, for this run though. The first one's to Fortunate for teaching me how to run the game at 11 p.m. at GDQ. <laughs> that was hype. And to yeah, Gavin for helping me out as well. Yeah, those two helped me out um, at GDQ. It was really cool. They were one. How about someone who just like, just teach me the run right now? And you know, it really got me like wanting to play this run. So shout out to those two. Yeah, fortunate actually uh, learned at GDQ because um, I know he <laughs> he's definitely very obsessed with uh, Alpha Sapphire, and uh, I remember seeing him playing it still just a lot. Mm -hmm. But obviously, from watching all of us um, doing Let's Go, he, he literally picked it up at GDQ and also ran it in this tournament. Yeah, it was it was cool to see like, everyone just grinding everything. So <laughs> fortunate, uh, I was like, yeah, I just I've owned a few runs, but I'm not a teacher still. I was like, damn, really? Let's go. Let's go, indeed. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs>
Uh, I was keeping an eye on the stars. Um, honestly, yeah, both of these stars are fine. Yeah, Iron Star had 118 special attack at 46, 119 speed, so it's going to handily outspeed the Rapidash coming up for Blaine's Gym. Whereas well, I... Kid Rocker, I just pulled it up. He's got 114 special attack, a little on the low side, but manageable, and also 120 speed, which again is sufficient. So both the stars are kind of fine. They're not the greatest stars in the world, but. Uh, honestly, for Kid Rocker, this is probably a big sigh of relief. Uh, seeing that initial CP of that 1026, you were probably like, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, um, it's not as bad as it could have been. So hopefully Kid Rocker taking some souls in that as he knows this is star stats. Yeah, probably just what's going to happen is um, like when you finally get to Koga, you're probably just going to have to Psychic um, the Weezing and the Venomoth. But again, that's you can circumvent that. It's just it's just a psychic instead of a skull, um, so it usually isn't too damning. You you might have like a Naomi range, uh, but it's not again not the worst thing in the world. Uh, and the speed is sufficient. We're not going to see any uh, any Pidgeot speed ties uh, yeah. in today's race. Spider making us sweat with their. Uh... <laughs> their Pidgeot uh, the other Rocker day. making me sweat. Uh, I thought he was going to go for that spinner pass, and at the last second this cut back, that Weezing is being uh... <laughs> in the most <laughs> interesting of positions. Uh, that, that was like the most loitering I've ever seen a Weezing do. It's like, I'm floating here. Look at me. Uh, Kid Rocker picking up that Max Elixir, as I had alluded to an hour and a half earlier. Uh, it's going to be that crucial move restoring item going into wow. the Elite Four. At another big point in this race, they are still so close. How many times have we seen this through Mount Moon and then through Rock Tunnel and now entering Flames Gym? They're so close. Remember, Iron has one extra Pokemon right now. So again, about 30 seconds. It starts to get a bit more clear at this point that it's in that realm of like 31, 32 seconds for that single evolution that you need. And this is almost spot on in terms of pace. Yeah, I would say that they're maximum 15 seconds apart at this point as they both go into uh, quiz time. Uh, all you gotta do is hit the correct inputs, make sure that <laughs> nothing, no issues with the Jorcons happen. Uh, just gotta select the correct answers here. Uh, false or what's that for the fourth question are both totally acceptable. Any, uh, any answer is acceptable for the fifth. Uh, Kid Rocker making it through quiz time. We've seen a couple of runners, including myself, unfortunately have a couple of mishaps. Uh, but looking like iron will also get through the quiz without any any accidental optionals it's so weird like what i i feel that this part i take so safely now because i have messed it up once where you just get a dropped input and you're like oh why did i even risk it um the weird thing is that if you do decide to two controller one of the optional fights you remain too controllered into Blaine because there's no menuing and no overworld if Oh, that's so interesting. I hadn't even fight. thought of that. Yeah, because whatever optional I hit, I think it was like I think it was like a Magmar or like a Ninetales or something where it was a little bit bulkier. So I was worried about KOing it with just like a skull, so I two controllered it. And then all of a sudden Blaine comes out, you're two controllering it, and like I didn't want to do this for Blaine. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, you skip Confuse Ray, I guess, I guess, but that's your consolation prize for having to hit an optional question mark. Uh, but no, sh no shenanigans here today. Uh, both runners going to cleanly make it through, no burns. Uh, saw Confuse Ray for Iron, didn't quite see if Kid Rocker had to uh, heal Confusion as well. Uh, but Magmar will get a flamethrower off, has a 10% chance to burn, losing time with GB status lag and healing. But thankfully, none of that happening here. Kid Rocker having Psyduck evolve into Golduck means that he is now on catch count with Iron. Uh, we'll see if Iron has any evolutions following this fight as well. All right, do you, do you split on Fade Out 
or on tail. Oh, fade out. Absolutely. Yeah, because, exactly. Yeah, like for, for the E4, for example, like if you if you beat Agatha or you beat Giovanni in, in self, like you don't There's, get a tail slap. You don't get a tail slap. Exactly. Uh, by the way, these runners are seven seconds apart. No freaking way. That's it. Seven seconds after Blaine, both of them approximately getting about a 2.06 which is a very good time. Uh, the, clearly both on PB pace right now. Yes, definitely. 206 with 45 catches. I, I always have to look at my splits in order to determine what pace they're on. Uh, let's take a look-see here. That's probably Five, two, in the realm two. of like 308, maybe even a 307. Yeah, it definitely feels like it. High 30 or high 307, mid 307 roundabouts there. Um, obviously, a lot can happen in between now and the end of the game. Uh, doing a very, very easy gym rush here. Uh, gonna go through Surge, followed by Erica. And then we start getting into the high variance trainer battles in the run. Uh, this it's is so insane. Because going into this round, I was thinking, you know, you probably need a 310 to be able to move on and be able to win the races. And. Um, right now, I think the I think Spider's 311 mid uh, is the weakest of the winning times. But just think about that. A 311 is what it takes to make it to round four at oh this stage of the competition. Yeah, you know the there's going to be some so, heavy Yeah, combination is so fierce at this point, especially considering that only the only the winner advances from here on out there's no more uh second place best time anymore it's just you are you're in or you're out there is no in between so at this moment like think of who could be our pot three runners for round four spider joker fury and maybe sandy sandy or one of these two or one of these two like, yeah. do you do you want to face any of these? Oh my gosh! Like that's so, <laughs> especially considering the growth of all of these runners throughout the tournament. Like, the more time that passes, the better these runners get. Mm -hmm. um, and for for some of us, some of us may feel like we've hit that like that ceiling already. And for some of these runners, they still have so much further to go before they hit their cap. What I think is so interesting about this tournament is, yeah, we put a lot of focus in on the, you know, the beginner runners and the people picking it up for the first time and literally learning it at GDQ and getting best times. But even at the top level, I mean, you got a 302. I got a 300. Etiquette finally beat his decade old PB. Yeah, Headstrong all also getting like a, <laughs> likewise, like beating her four year old PB as well very recently. Amber I mean, getting a sub, uh, a sub, sub three. three. I mean, just seeing PBs at every single level of the game because this because of this tournament and the grind is it, it's it's wild. Uh, meanwhile, think of the people that are going into pot one of the lower bracket. You've got Triv, Ergo, Etiquette. And Amber. You do not want to face any <laughs> of those people. Ooh, those oh. are all exceedingly fast runners. Uh, just as a quick reminder, directly after this race, I believe, we will have round four draws. So we got we don't need to draw for upper bracket because we already know who's gonna be in that race. But these these four lower bracket races, oh boy, they're yeah. Oh, I'm sweating <laughs> just thinking about it. I need to turn the AC on in my room. Yeah, and you're sweating because the pot two runners at the moment are yourself, uh, mm -hmm. Head Bob, and Aspect, and then again, either Sandy or one of these runners um, to complete out everybody who's advancing to round four, uh, even just in the, quote, lower bracket. But of course, pressure is high because <laughs> it will be an elimination round um, to make it to the lower bracket finals or just the regular semi-finals right um but still incredible runners as you're seeing just of those of all everybody that i just mentioned times of a 304 to a 311 uh posted in this round of the tournament mm -hmm. 
and to see somebody like Amber, who has a best time of a 259, <laughs> now in the round four lower bracket, <laughs> it says, it says something about the strength of the runners up and down. It, that means the upsets are possible. Yeah, and also consider the fact that the the lower pot two runners in Aspect and Sandy have beat out like the times from the upper bracket. Like Sandy beating out my time of 30836 by 19 seconds. Aspect beating out like every Most runner everybody. every runner except New Amber. Yeah. Uh, coming down from if, upper bracket. If Aspect would have been in the upper or the upper bracket on time would have been fifth. Yes. They've got the fifth fastest time, and they're just the best of the lower bracket for round three. Uh, it's going to be a wild draw and a wild set of five races coming up for round four. So, I, uh... I, couldn't, I couldn't believe the race that I was in because between myself and Amber and Triv, all getting the best first, second, and third place times. In upper bracket, yeah. That was... That, that was wild to be a part of. Obviously, a little tournament discussion as uh, we kill a bit of time. Uh, just going through Surge and Erica, no big deal for either of the runners. Uh, right. Delaying, delaying the gyms until you're over level to have the star meet. Right. We won't see any, uh, any Fire Blast misses or any Magmar shenanigans today out of both these runners. I do believe they both have Dodrio already fully evolved. So the next fight coming up after Erica will be Pokemon Trainer Blue, who decides to test your metal before entering Sylphco. Uh, Executor being the one and only Pokemon in this run that Starmie cannot handle alone due to its unique psychic grass typing, which requires calling in a, a flying or a fire type move, flying in the case of Drill Peck plus an X attack to secure that onto Executor. Um, but really just biding our time until the the real interesting portions of the run, starting with that fabled Archer 2. Yeah, some, somebody timed it out. It was like the optimal best three-turn Archer fight is still like a minute 45 -ish. That's so dumb. Obviously a bit of like the intro and like the sending out the Pokemon. Uh, but each turn just takes so, so long. So obviously, like, with the runners being so close just on time, with uh, Kid Rocker having just the one extra Pokemon right now, so getting that extra 30-second handicap that uh, he will cash in a little bit later on. Even without the runners being this close, this would still be a close race, even if they were just a minute apart, because there is still there's still enough RNG, even with, quote, safe strats. Um, there's still enough RNG in the run that can still sway, and then you can start uh, implementing some risky strats if you were the, you know, the trailing player. But yeah, blue and maybe having to hit that fire blast should not have to see it here. The archer fight will be the first big one. We've been deeming the, what the big three as being Archer, Archer, Koga, and Caroline, uh, which was not necessarily the big three that we thought were going to be the deciders of this tournament. Right. At the beginning of this tournament, we were all hashtag let Lance decide, let Champ decide. But now it's more along the lines of hashtag let Caroline decide, stare at Caden for 14 turns and the like. So a lot more variance than we thought. And we'll have to see, depending on how the RNG plays out in the upcoming fights, what strategies uh, Iron and Kid Rocker will employ, whether that's altering their saffron shop to possibly do safe strats or maybe some risky strats we'll see if they buy x defense we'll see if they buy x special defense we'll see if they pull out the two controller on samuel or maybe they'll hydro pump samuel to save those extra five seconds like really anything goes at this point and it'll be really interesting to see how it shapes up i really hope that we do see both the runners actually just end up going for the risky strats because they know that they are so close to one another because you don't want to be the one committing to safe strats and then having your opponent go for the risky strats because then the ball's in their court. If they just do the risky strats and don't get punished, they're going to win. And then you probably are kicking yourself saying, why did I do safe strats when there are faster strats? Right. And then on the flip side of the, of the dilemma, maybe you go safe strats and hope that 
like if you end up seeing that your opponent does go start going for those risky plays hope that the rng doesn't fall in their favor and you're able to uh, sweep sweep the rug or sweep the leg i don't know how the term goes yeah. you know what i mean uh honestly, but just clean up from I, behind and i personally felt that that was the situation i was in against amber in that upper bracket matchup having about a 40 second lead going through the Silphco section, I committed to safe strats, so that way I lost as little time as possible. And I said, okay, I'm kicking the ball to your court, but pressure is on you to do all the risky stuff. And that forced Amber to pump Samuel and one controller Giovanni, which already, again, feels risky, but end up getting the 25 seconds back to go 15 seconds into victory road. And it's like, okay, but pressure's still on you to not get put to sleep and still well we both had to hit our hydro pumps and that ended up being uh the decider but that could have easily gone in the other direction right uh we're seeing iron enter the archer two fight uh the the true double slash multi battle depending on your lingo uh only having control of starmie is going to psychic the muck because it does have an array of very annoying moves and the likes of toxic minimize protect uh, I'm missing one that is also equally annoying, more than likely. Uh, um, this is an okay start. Uh, basically, you don't want to see Protect from the Muck. That's just the worst case scenario, no matter what the uh, Electro does. In this case, we get the Thunderbolt, which is okay. You have to heal on this turn, but now you're really hoping for Self-Destruct, and the Cubone should be favored to use Bone Meringue. That combination would get rid of the Raticate. Unfortunately, we don't see that. We get another Thunderbolt. So you again have to bide your time on a uh, uh, on another turn here. Yeah, Electro being this low should favor it to use Self-Destruct here. Assuming that it doesn't, okay, it does anyway. Uh, Raticate is going to take half its health and damage here. And ideally, you definitely want to see Bone Ryan come out of this Cubone, finish off that the Raticate with a critical hit to boot. Um, so, that, so that'll be hopefully a five turn. Um, we actually get the same thing on Kid Rocker, or no, no, we get a better version on Kid Rocker screen, potentially. We get the self-destruct, no protect. Which so has again, the potential the for a three-turn fight right. on Kid it's Rocker's bit, side. It's a bit less unlikely, because for whatever reason, the Bone Meringue is now a bit less favored. Doesn't like to go for it with only Raticate, in this case, Golbat on the field. So we're probably going to see focus energy, but if you do happen to get Bone Meringue into the Raticate, uh, you really hold out hope that you can get the legendary three turn fight. Right. Cubone does have Headbutt and Focus Energy to supplement that Bone Meringue. Unfortunately, goes for the Headbutt here. Headbutt. So, no three turn fight for Kid Rocker. But still can be a four turn. Ends up being a slightly less optimal four turn. Uh, in this case, you actually need a Sucker Punch to not go into Starmie. Otherwise, you're not forced to heal. Uh, at this hall because sucker punch tends to do about 34 points of damage kind of on the average um so in this case yeah gonna have to heal there's the focus energy so heal the psychic will also be a five turn fight for k rocker so both of them getting five turn fight archers so still even through that first big rng hurdle oh the bone rang not critting Ooh. twice there would have clinched the early turn for uh for kid rocker but uh, does have enough HP to eat a Sucker Punch to the face. Takes out the Raticate. So, honestly, pretty equivalent archers across the board for both of these two. I'm just noticing on their tracker, it looks like they're uh, marking their gift Pokemon uh, early. With Kid Rocker still needing the uh, Weezing to go here. Uh, right. Iron might be assuming I didn't... I didn't see if Iron also got the uh, Muck Evolution already. Uh, he did. Okay, because that would probably be the last one to see. Um, so this is basically uh, the realm of like 25 uh, seconds lead for Iron. Yeah, give or take, the Weezing should evolve over on Kid Rocker's side, either on this upcoming Justin James fight or the second Giovanni fight. Thankfully, uh, this Justin James fight is very easy. All you have to do is hit Psychic twice, and it's theoretically no big problem there as opposed to the the prior two fights in the pv strats you usually tend to keep rapidash as the uh second pokemon um through starting on ted uh you, 
So hopefully you don't get a death animation out of it as opposed to the sacrifice strat, which is safer. Uh, secondly, then you would have to hit a fire blast on blue. But thirdly, on this fight, you actually get a little bit of an advantage back using stomp on the wheezing. Uh, you could just get a random flinch, 30%, uh, which would help you out in that case. Right. Um, and Dojo doesn't have that same flinch. Interestingly enough, uh, Magmar, if you decide to use it through all the way through this fight, uh, has Confuse Ray, which can basically serve the same purpose as Stomp. Confuse Ray on the Weezing can cause it to hit itself, basically a flinch stomp uh, in that regard as well. Uh, but no Magmar today. A little bit unfortunate, but... Yeah, not quite as fast, but as long... The risk here is the Weezing has Thunderbolt. I don't know who's in their right mind gave Weezing Thunderbolt. As a <laughs> uh, but... It is the risk here. In this case, you would just heal it off on the second turn. Uh, you just don't want to get paralyzed because then you're just going into... You're just going to have to menu an extra time to get that healed off. Right. And say maybe you've been really unlucky on status items. Maybe you had to heal a burn or maybe you had to heal confusion and burn on, on the Blaine fight. There is a possibility that you do not have a status he heal here to deal with a Thunderbolt Paralyzed, which could spell eminent doom for your run. Wow, I've never been in that situation. It, it's def it's definitely a situation to be in, but thankfully, uh, noted on Kid Rocker's side, uh, didn't have to use any of his healing items to deal with Confused Ray, so holding on to both the Sable close. and Crunchies. I think in my I think it was in my tournament run, I was out of the Paralyzed heals, and I used my second full heal item on uh, Blank. Because I had to heal Paralysis three times before Blaine, and then Blaine used up that, the, the Pewter Crunchies. So if I would have gotten uh, Paralyzed on the Justine James, I'm like just realizing this. Yep, that is why <laughs> I said theoretically back. this should be a, a totally safe fight, but there is always that chance for the Thunderbolt to go into Starmie with the Paralyze, and if you're out of status heals at that point, uh, better hope you have Paralyzed heals sound like Blaine, except for Paralyze instead of Burn. Exactly. <laughs> well, you brought a Paralyze heal, and you have like a Lightning Bolt tie. Dude, I want a, I want a Lightning <laughs> Bolt tie now. Yeah, you're you're the weatherman here. I know! <laughs> I actually Hello? wore my, I wore my like literally highlighter yellow tie on air today. And when I say it's highlighter, I mean literally highlighter <laughs> yellow. <laughs> Goodness. It's uh, great. My I am old, coming my out of the- boss hated it. Oh, gosh, I can only imagine. <laughs> Iron coming out of the, out of that fight with 21 seconds on the clock. Uh, Kid Rocker not going to be too far behind. Nidoqueen Queen is the last Pokemon here. Uh, it's going to take it out very handily with combination of X Spec and Scald. Uh, should be exiting the fight at roughly around a 48. It looks like so 27 seconds separating these two runners. Uh, Still anybody's game. Yeah, but... at this stage, I I honestly wouldn't feel comfortable committing to safe strats um, because it does lose on the order of if you do it perfectly, probably like forty five seconds to like PV strats mm -hmm. um, because the the two controllering of Samuel plus two controllering Giovanni, as we found out uh, via Amber, saves that twenty five seconds. Uh, and that's, you usually lose another about 25 seconds through the uh, Elite Four sequence as well. Mainly from Lance being the biggest time sink, a little bit on Agatha as well. Um, so like 50 seconds is kind of that threshold of like, if you're more than 50 ahead, you should pretty, like you're in that realm of being able to do, do things safely, barring like a whole bunch of Koga or Caroline nonsense. But at this realm, 27 seconds i don't think i would feel comfortable doing safe strats i think i would have to do mix in a little bit of risk just to keep my opponent at arm's length away yeah especially for for pikachu here um well i guess at least for irons you really have to wonder what he's thinking right now understanding that he's just like one one catches uh worth of time ahead of kid rocker is going to go into the shop. We'll have to see what he chooses to buy, and that's going to signify more than likely what strategies he's going to employ, as I'm pretty sure uh, Iron did not 
I haven't paid attention to Iron Spag thus far in terms of whether he bought an X defense in Pewter or not. At that point, you basically commit to doing either one controller Giovanni or two controller Giovanni, uh, but you do obviously have the option of buying one here as Eevee normally does at this point in the game. Yeah, and the, the best thing is that on the Sabrina fight, uh, we will be able to tell no matter what uh, once we see that X item inventory. Right. Uh, is going to buy X defense. Yeah, so going to denote uh, at least the possibility of one controlling through Agatha and Champ. All right, ops to end on the X special attacks there. So didn't need to buy full heals. Usually if you're pretty good on status items, including antidotes, uh, you can skip that full heal input. So probably save, you save a little bit of extra time doing that. Yeah, exactly. Probably a couple extra seconds in the bank. Uh, definitely seeing spadefs here on Kid Rocker's side. Yeah, definitely need to have that option open, especially if you are you are 30 seconds behind. Um, is going to buy the X defense, so signifying that he has thrown open the door for one controller Giovanni here. We got a couple extra inputs. We're going to probably see a couple extra seconds in the bank now for Iron. So let's call it, let's call it kind of a round 30 second lead. But that means it's not the. Uh... It's not the it's not the big three anymore. We're kind of adding the the other four, right? right so this could be really spicy. Uh, Iron actually giving a little bit of that time back. We kind of forgot the puzzle for a second, uh, and then had to wait for a spinner cycle. Yeah, the way I end up remembering it, well, one, I have notes. I usually just stare at the notes. Uh, two, with every trainer uh, or every section that does not have a trainer. All you have to oh kid rocker please my heart uh every teleporter section that does not have a trainer you go clockwise everyone that does have a trainer you go diagonal except for the channeler uh which you go straight up yeah i always find that it's like the first handful of uh spinners and trainers with technically rotators are pretty consistent until you get to that Chandler. And then it's like, okay, did you spin already? Did you not? And that sets up this guy, which is even less consistent. Um, it's just kind of one of those things where it's like, I don't want to wait, but if I'm playing it extra safe, um, it's gonna obviously be extra safe. Um, right. Iron screen, as we're seeing here, um, you typically set up uh, to plus four special attack uh, and then plus two speed. Uh, there is an X defend in the inventory, by the way. Ah, uh, okay. So Iron did commit to that very early on, knowing that this was going to be a, a close race in the end. I just don't know if he understood that this would be this close. Totally yeah, fine. Not close. <laughs> Everything is fine. Um, yeah. By the way, typical light screen turn one here. Uh, by the way, Sabrina has no um, priority move. So this is completely safe from here, so long as you've taught Thunderbolt. Uh, in a prior menu, which both of our runners also did. Yep, you've taught Thunderbolt, you've set an, up an X speed, and Alakazam is really the only thing that could possibly outspeed you. Thankfully, you're Slowbro. Wanna, you're gonna want to heal on this turn. Okay, good catch from Kid Rocker. Oh, that, that was a lot lower than you would have liked to be. Um, this is totally okay because the light screen's just gonna. It costs an extra turn, but the light screen still wears out. And Kid Rocker finishing up with the fight. A little bit close, but, you know, safe. I, I was worried when he went into the fight menu and then was just like, wait, 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 wait. Totally good, though. Iron exiting the fight at about 27, 28. Didn't quite catch the exact time on that. Kid Rocker still has two more pokes to go. Again, did buy that extra X defend, which... Uh, cost him and, a couple and, extra seconds. And lost a turn on this fight because of the extra heal. Right. But they both did get light screen turn one. And that's basically like the lights. So this turned into like kind of a light screen turn two situation where typically you'd have to burn the extra turn uh, by just healing. And in this case, it, the healing was just necessary. All right, Iron opting for also the PB strats, which is usually to Elixir uh, in this menu. It is most optimal to do it here. Uh, the time difference is about uh, about 40 seconds now. Yeah, give or take. That realm, 40 to 43. 
Uh, this, this, I think, outside of the uh, the opening options menu, is probably one of the most complex uh, menus in the entire game. There's yes. so much to do here. There's elixirine and healing, swapping the hyper potion to the front, then you rare candy, then you swap your X special attacks to the last slot, and then you. Or I, I even forgot you have to deposit deposit Pokemon your Pokemon to... after you heal. Yeah. And then you gotta menu over to the time, town map and fly all the way down to Fuchsia. So very complex menu. Uh, noting Iron Special Attack here is 126. This doesn't guarantee any range uh, for the Koga fight specifically. I think it's just shy of guaranteeing Venomoth at 127. Uh, so Iron using his Elixir before Koga means that he's going to pay very close attention to how many Psychics he'll have coming out of the Koga fight. You need at minimum four coming out to be able to, to get through not only Giovanni's gym, but also Rival 5 and Naomi uh, having to Psychic the Venusaur as your final Psychic. Yeah, so you, you back time that there. So yeah, four minimum, which means you usually want six going into the final buck because Protect is a thing. Uh, right. And even then, like... I've seen double protect on uh, on Koga. In fact, he he gave me one fight where he double protected twice and succeeded once. And I've definitely seen triple protect come out. Um, oh wow, I haven't seen that. But that, uh, means, that means Caden control. In this case, Iron got a very good Caden fight. Obviously, yes. this muck uh, has minimized, and if you see that turn one, it turns into a mess. Uh, you can also lose an extra psychic if you get Moon Blast with a. Uh, special attack drop, meaning you have to burn an extra Psychic on the Beedrill. And again, um, every single Mon in this entire gym has Toxic Protect. Um, pr protect obviously being the most annoying of those. So if you have to use one Psychic on something, you usually have to use two, uh, which is why these Scald ranges are so important for Koga here. You can always Scald the gold bats, but it's the Venomoth and the Weezing that are a little bit more difficult. If it's possible, you save inputs and you save that Psychic beat. Right, we'll have to see how Kid Rocker's Cadence Muck goes setting, setting up an X special attack. Always want to see Protect. Does come out from the Muck. So going to Psychic Oh no, the double Ooh, protect! Ooh, double protect! Oh, wow. you've got to be kidding me. Kid but Rocker, Kid really Rocker didn't use the elixir yet, so he's in a much safer position here mm. um, with the uh, with psychic usages. Uh, looks like Iron just got a very basic protect into no protect here. Let's see if we get a Scald. We are going to see a Scald. This is a 15 and 16. Does hit it. So the Venomoth has, I think it's Big Buzz or Bug Buzz. Big bug buzz. Big bug buzz. I just know it deals a lot of damage. Usually doesn't kill from full, but uh, can be yeah. very spooky. Yeah, bug being it. super effective against psychic types. Starmie is part psychic. Wumbo buzz, one might say. <laughs> All right, here's the bug. Starting with eight psychics going into this is obviously a fantastic position. And no protect as well. So that was actually a very clean gym on Iron Side. So having the lead to start, probably going to pull a few more seconds out of the bag here. But we will see what happens on Kid Rocker's side. What's weird is that Koga can give you a true four turn fight if you see explosion turn one. Yes. Koga doesn't necessarily have kill AI, but if you are at low health, there is like this theory that you will see less protects and potentially get a true fortune. Going for Scald on the Wheezy, but misses. Oh no, misses the, the range, range, unfortunately. Oh, the, and... we're gonna see Antidote and possibly an explosion out of the Wheezing. All right, protects here. Not sure how explosion AI works. I don't know if that has anything to do with health or if it's just damage or whatnot, um, but not particularly punished, thankfully, for missing the range. Yeah, unfortunately just lost two extra turns um, because of the uh, the antidote and then the extra protect. Yeah, noting that Iron came out of the fight at 08, I don't recall whether or not uh, early teeth slash late teeth are a thing. I'm pretty sure Iron always goes for late teeth. Uh, ha 
had this discussion before. I don't know what Kid Rocker goes for. And Kid uh, Rocker got early teeth in this case. Gotcha. So we'll we'll have a more we'll have a better bearing on how far ahead or behind they are uh, going into the, the final gym. Push. And pushy push, yes, for sure. Well, nobody did uh, super omega early teeth, right? Yep, no, no <laughs> omega early teeth alpha sapphire here. No catch route is dire enough, hopefully, to have to go for that. Um, as Iron using Sky Dash to get over to Viridian City, fading out at 56 on the clock. Whew, I just had to catch my breath. <laughs> Just knowing how close this has been, and a little bit of downtime here because you get a cutscene uh, between visiting the gym and then actually entering the gym. Uh, but once we're back in there, things will start getting spicy again. Yeah, and with the, the gap widening just a little bit now, uh, it is Iron's race to lose, but Kid Rocker also probably just needs to start going for some of those risky plays in hopes that Iron maybe goes for some safe strats or maybe slips up a little bit and RNG doesn't fall in his favor. Uh, I can, if he decides I can to definitely see team. Iron doing the safe strats here, being like, okay, I built up a little bit of a lead. I can now expend some of that time to guarantee I'm not going to have something weird or funny happen. So... For example, if, if Iron just goes for the safe strats in Giovanni, including 2C in it, uh, and Kid Rocker goes for the 1C fights, again, ball kind of in Kid Rocker's court to go for risky strats, um, but can utilize that to catch up. Um, yeah, and this, guarantee. yeah, by this point, with Kid Rocker being a minute three behind Iron now um, on that fade out, uh, definitely needs to start start pushing the envelope on those risky plays. Yeah, that, that one minute tends to be a very important number. That's always where I've gauged, like, oh, if I've got a minute lead, I can, you know, stop sweating a little bit. You know, I've, I've built up that lead via either good play or good RNG to start using those safe strats and really not trying to threaten more than what's going to happen. Because in this case, it's it's really just Caroline can, that can be a big-time time sink. Uh, but if you can not bleed more time than you have to uh you can try to just hold on to that one minute lead even if it's safe versus risky strats all right we'll see after after this tamer trainer what iron decides to do um but yeah this is going to be very very standard the fights are very scripted all the way through uh up to naomi um so Assuming safe strats, we should see Iron get through at least the next four to five minutes just fine. I don't think we'll see anybody try to psychic stomp the uh, upcoming Nido King. Uh, yeah, they need about like 130 special attack to guarantee that that's always going to kill. Right, and with Iron having the higher special attack of the two and only being at 120, uh, 126, 127 special attack. Uh, probably going to use Scald and X special this. As we see with the, the second controller. controller come out here. Thank you, Rocker, just entering the gym himself. Yeah, we have, haven't seen any Hydro Pumps yet out of this. Oh, we do Ooh, get a Psychic, psychic stomp. stomp. This isn't guaranteed, necessarily. Should be uh, pretty good. Okay. All right, does get it. Um, saving that X item usage, dipping into the bag, does waste a couple of extra seconds. Um, so, a little yeah, bit safer, that, but we, go ahead. We mentioned that that's not guaranteed, um, because I, I remember, cal like, when you do the funny calcs, you check weird things, like, again, when you're, when you're dealing with Starmie's like special attack and Rapid Ash's attack stat, you don't want to have like this huge grid because that can be a bit overwhelming. Um, so I was remember calculating the lowest possible attack on Rapid Ash. You know, zero IV, minimum roll. All right, what do I need out of my Starmie? And it turns out 130 is the number. But at 125, it starts feeling definitely safe enough. It's like 13 and 16 at worst. So you start playing around some of those numbers and saying, okay, I know my Rapid Ash isn't that bad and isn't going to get a double minimum roll. As we do see the second controller come out for Iron, 
and the and one controller one coming out fight. for Kid Rocker. Simply hit the Hydro Pump, get your accuracy no, up. No, Mega Horn goes no. down, and there's an instant KO on Kid Rocker's side. Oh, went for the risky play. Is going to have to bring out the Rapidash, going to revive the Starmie. Rapidash is likely going to go down to a single Earthquake from Nidoking, uh, which means that Kid Rocker has one final chance to to get through this uh, this Nidoking. Earthquake, no power of love from Rapidash means no no chance of bringing out the second controller. Is going to have to bet it all on the single Hydro Pump from Starmie. You hate to see because because Mega Horn can also miss, but it just it never seems to. Okay, hits the second pump, so Kid Rocker is still in this race. Is going to need to heal out of battle, revive the Rapidash, so. Unfortunately, taking a very large chunk of time loss there as Iron extends his lead to controlling Giovanni. Rapidash going down being the fight that you want to see uh, to get through the fight as fast as possible using safe strats. But, oh, that risk not paying off for Kid Rocker, unfortunately. Getting punished by the miss in the Mega Horn. But it was the correct decision. Yes, absolutely. Like, like you, you don't you don't fault the decision making in that in that instance. That's just an unlucky twenty percent miss. Right at this point, you have nothing to lose, everything to gain, um, by hitting the pump. But just unfortunately, just falling a little bit further behind. Probably going to see even more risky strats coming out of Kid Rocker now, uh, as he yeah, makes sure say, to. Hopefully, he heals because uh, yes. that would not be an acceptable uh, health to go into that fight for. Right. Starmy could possibly live in Earthquake uh, at 60 health with an X defense, but that does require you to at least take one extra turn in the fight to heal. I think I've only ever once seen Hydro Miss into Mega Horn Miss. It and then you me. just had a standoff. <laughs> it wasn't me. I think it was in this tournament. Um, but I remember seeing it and thinking, oh, okay, that's never happened before. Because, uh, yeah, you, you see Megahorn, it's just like, well, why do I always miss Hydro, but you never miss Megahorn? Kid Rocker doing the standard one controller fight here, setting up one X defense to uh, take three of Dugtrio's attacks, setting up an X special attack, and going to hit Skald here. Slash is totally okay. fine, and what you want to see here, and that is not quick attack range at all for any star. Um, so... We'll need to revive Rapid Ash. 27 being the maximum. That's correct. So the only totally problem fine. here is that uh, Kid Rocker does have to revive the Rapid Ash. So gonna have to uh, do that menu anyway coming out yeah. of the fight. There is for the Eevee side, there is some very niche situations where you can one controller the rival five fight. Usually the prerequisite is that you must outspeed the Raichu. And we uh, see 137 speed for Kid Rocker. Yeah, which is not fast enough. The uh, Raichu is 139, so you want 140 uh, to be able to do that. Uh, in that case, you would have to go in at full health anyways. Uh, the Rival 5 fight is one of those where it's like, uh, attack with Starmie and pump X items in with the partner. If you one controller it, you just go plus two special, and you don't need the speed boost at all. So you do give the uh, the Pidgeot a turn. It does have sand attack for some reason. <clears throat> you tend to... <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is... Uh... Oh, my throat is going to... This, is, this race stay, has been so close. Again. Please, please. Anyways, I was saying, um, you do give the Pidgeot a sand attack potential turn, which always can be a little bit freaky. Uh, but again, the key there is that you would have to Hydro Pump the Raichu in order to KO it at plus two special. It is possible. Um, I've done it only ever once successfully. Uh, funny enough, it was in the GDQ practice room in that huh. big race that we were mentioning earlier. Um, it was just one of those practice situations where I was looking over my shoulder. Etchy was a little bit farther away. Uh, Etiquette was in second at the time. I'm like... I think I'm close enough. I could go for this, and I had a fast enough star. Um, that was the only time I've ever successfully done the rival five fight one controller, uh, and it did pay off. I ended up, I ended up being etiquette that race, but only because his uh, rapid ash didn't die on champion. Oh gosh! Uh, As and you it can gave see me from... just enough seconds to to pull ahead. 
as you can see from Iron Screen, uh, Rival does have a Jolteon. Uh, there is no universe where Starmie outspeeds Jolteon naturally, so you must set up that X speed uh, that EB version can afford to skip if your Starmie has high enough speed to outspeed that Raichu. Yeah, and if you do outspeed, like, it's obviously still preferred to probably two controller this fight anyways. You're just allowed to skip an X item, which again, is at least a couple seconds faster. Right, Iron approaching the uh, Victory Road sequence, and we'll have to at least attempt a Hydro Pump here. Yes, uh, Naomi, uh, as we all know, has a very, very beefy, bulky uh, Kangaskhan that can just batter down your Starmie with Crunch and Sucker Punch if you choose to one controller it. Iron, more than likely going to elect the safe approach to controlling it, uh, does still need to hit Hydro Pump uh, with an X special attack, even if it misses, should still be able to clean up the fight with a second X special attack and Scald, which is guaranteed for for his special attack range. Yeah, the the only thing that could make it a little bit risky is if the Rapidash is still at, like half health, which you tend to see like you'd revive but not heal the Rapidash after Giovanni. If the uh, if the Kangaskhan decides to outrage into the Rapidash. Which is not guaranteed because Outrage is is a move that is actually affected on yourself. So it is a random choice of target. But if the Rapidash goes down and you miss the Hydro Pump, then you have to hit the Hydro Pump instead of setting up that plus four. Right, so we'll see what happens on this fight as Kid Rocker exits the rival five fight and also is going to go into the Victory Road badge check text smashing portion of the run. Right, we're seeing the X special attack. We've seen the click on the hydro pump. Does hit the pump. Does not get the range. Not get the range. And uh, <laughs> there's the outrage. Yeah. Thankfully, no, it does at least hi hit the hydro pump so that you can just finish it off with psych or scald here and then psychic down the Venusaur. No, no risk here. I, I once was just like, oh, psychic, fewer inputs. Uh, yeah. Remember how you said you needed four psychics to. Uh... Uh, after Koga yep. to finish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot use an exercise. So sometimes you still muscle memory back into the Scald just to be safe, but it would save you some inputs if you do have two Psychics to spare. Right. Iron did have the Psychic to spare, but uh, just going for Scald to secure the kill on the Kanga, flipping down two for, for the Psychic for the Venusaur. Have you ever Hydro Pumped this uh, upcoming Hypno? I have, we have never. Seen yeah, we have seen it. Uh, you can Hydro Pump it, uh, I believe, at 140 special attack. It is a 50% chance to kill, assuming that it hits. So taking 80% of 50 40. there is really 40% chance to kill, exactly. Yeah, it's usually uh, just I've end only, up going for the I've Thunderbolt only attempted Skull. It once. And by once, I mean I attempted it four times and missed all four of my <laughs> That plus the one I used on Naomi meant that I was out of Hydro Pumps. <laughs> we see Hypnosis coming out from Hypno. Missed the first one, did hit the second Hypnosis, uh, but going to heal it with an Awakening here. Already has damage on the Hypno, which means that it will go down this turn to a second Thunderbolt. Uh, Slowbro going to go down soon after that, as Kid Rocker now entering the Naomi fight, also with a Rapid Ash at half health. Um, Kid Rocker's range is going to be worse just due to his lower special attack. So we'll see what happens here. Misses the pump, gets no. the... Okay, this should be fine. F should flip over to Scald here. Oh, he did um, not. Yep. No, he's gonna, Realizing he's his mistake, mistake, doesn't want to... Does not want to risk a second missed pump going to Scald exit attack or X special attack to guarantee the Kangaskhan there. So good catch on his part. Uh, a little bit of lost time there to the miss input, but going to make it out of the fight just fine. To mention it on Ironside, he got put to sleep on that fight. That and the Caroline fight both have sleep mons and tends to be the biggest source of RNG in Victory Road because every time you get put to sleep uh, and every time you miss Hydro Pump on Caroline, you are losing a turn. So it's kind of double trouble when it comes to Caroline because missed Hydro Pump into getting put to sleep is yeah, just it's, really it's two turns bad. even when that situation occurs, which feels doubly as bad.
Of course, we have Alexa skip coming up. It's the final trainer skip of the run. Highest pressure skip, probably not the most difficult uh, in yeah. terms of skill level. But again, you don't want your uh, left stick accidentally pressed in at the wrong time. Oh, Iron taking a very sharp angle Ooh. there, but but course corrects actually, it, taking a little bit slower. Into Alexa, but again, their vision is so bad. They they basically got a C in the chest. Yeah, you've uh, goodness. Just patting Alexa on the shoulder there as he moves on forward into Caroline. Again, you mentioned that uh, sleep mons are a thing. This Jinx has lovely kiss. Uh, can be very trolly at times. Hashtag let Caroline more. decide. Yeah, also has, no. yeah, uh, Psychic Turn 1, Special Defense Drop, doesn't matter as long as you hit the pump here, which Iron does. Uh, Jinx also knows Ice Beam, which can freeze you. In that scenario, you would want to hit Scald. Scald is a thawing move, along with the other Fire-type moves in the game. Um, can instantly defrost you, just means that you have to hit Scald twice instead of, uh, instead of Hydro Pump or healing a status. But thankfully, in that situation, you're extremely unlike. I mean, I I would think that the uh, the AI would know to not lovely kiss. Right, because you're already device. frozen. Right. Theoretically. So, so theoretically, you're kind of guaranteed to at least not get put to sleep. So you only lose one turn and not like two or multiple. Uh, wasn't paying too close attention to Iron's HP there. Uh, the next fight, uh, Pokemaniac Dawson, I believe is, is his name, has a Lick Tongue that knows power up. You do need to set up on it with an X special attack and then Scald or Psychic appropriately, depending on your special attack stat on your star. Uh, at good HP and defense combos, you can just go straight into the fight. Blastoise is another Pokemon that has a priority move in Aqua Jet. So if you get knocked down to single digit HP by the Lick Tongue, you will definitely need to heal before that Blastoise comes out. Let's see if we get Alexa skip here on the rocker side. Clean, very clean. Ooh, yes, very no clean. Alexa skip here, but we do get fresh water skip. Um, <laughs> no, uh, no hydration for these runners in game. Uh, not needed at this point in the game anyway. Yeah, only the commentators. Gosh, rewatching that, I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, there's a fresh water there. The more you know. Alluding to uh, work in progress lapper strats for Pikachu, trying to get safe strats uh, nailed down from Aga through, through, through Champ. We probably won't see that coming out today. Iron does take the power up, but is very solidly out of Aqua Jet range. Uh, looks like yeah, Kid Rocker uh, getting through Caroline okay for the most yeah, part. Yeah, not get put to sleep and hit the Hydro Pump. So finally a clean fight. For the for Kid Rocker might be a little too little too little too late. Yeah, um, we'll have to see the times coming out of Victory Road. Uh, but Iron only well, missing the range on the Kangaskhan, and then one turn on the Hypno to heal. Uh, hypnosis may not be enough for Kid Rocker to come back. See if Iron picks up this full restore. He will. Yep, uh, denoting it's gonna, that. It's a, it's a bit counterintuitive, like buying X defense and X special defense and picking up full restores actually denotes risky strats right. of those fights uh, because the safe strats is to just two controller the fight and then you're just minimizing the amount of time loss by not picking up wasteful items because you don't need to defend or special defend or full restore otherwise on those specific fights that they're used for. Yeah, full restore is mostly just used for Agatha um, because of Arbok's glare plus Weezing's Thunderbolt having a chance to paralyze you. The thing is for Pika is that you'd have to bring out uh, the proverbial bird or fish in uh, Dodrio or Golduck um, or even Lapras at this point for Pika. Uh, just due to the nature of wanting to bait out Weezing as the second Pokemon, because for Agatha, you always want to set up an X special attack first to take out the Arbok, and then depending on how the fight plays out, uh, needing to set that X speed to outspeed the, the Gengars and possibly the Golbat. 
Uh, but keeping Rapid Ash in the party denotes uh, probably just going to one controller. Agatha might bring out that. Oh my Ooh. god, the kid oh, rocker! That's a crit and a natural live on natural one. Live on one. Power, was not power of love. That was Jesus. just live on one. That is Ooh. so close. Uh, Oh, Kid Rocker is probably just like, why? Why me? Like, why can't we balance out the RNG? Yeah, definitely taking the brunt of it here. Yeah, but thankfully, living on one, whether power level or not, does mean that he does keep, manage to keep on going, keep on trucking through this final fight of a victory road. Iron looks like he's set up to plus six based off of his health range right here. Uh, under, totally understandable, being in a very solid forward position allows you to play a little bit safer. Uh, plus six will secure the Thunderbolt on this Lapras, as well as the Scald on the following Jinx. If you go to plus four, wasn't paying too close attention to Iron Special Attack, uh, but likely a range on the, the Lapras and possibly even a pump on the Jinx if uh, he had elected to use only two Special Attacks. Kid Rocker now just coming out of Victory Road. Uh, with a 6.10 on the clock, us more than a minute behind Iron at this rate, possibly a minute 20. Who was it that had the minimum speed, uh, Starmie, that, like, speed tied the Pidgeots? Uh, it was Spider the other day. Oh. Uh, I was so, on comms for that, and we were sweating. So, did you count this and catch this, but with that kind of speed, you can speed tie Lorelai's Jinx. Yes, you must have 129 speed to outspeed Lorelai's Jinx. Uh, Spider's uh, start did fortunately meet that threshold, uh, but technically the last speed threshold cleared uh, for, <laughs> for Iron and Kid Rocker. <laughs> Just barely. But yeah, it was one of those things where I was like, wait, 128, whoa, like that's actually like, you can speed tie that. Uh, very, okay, so I think Iron's at a very interesting health right now on Starmie. Yes, we are going to see, uh, I believe Iron Star is, is at around 50. We'll 51. easily, yeah, we'll easily tank an Onyx Earthquake, uh, non crit, assuming that Onyx goes for it because on, he has two Pokemon no, in his party, okay. <laughs> does get the Stealth Rock to try and set up on the Rapidash. Uh, which means no faint shenanigans here. Kid Rocker at pretty low HP, probably opted to not heal coming out of the the Dawson fight, electing to heal in battle instead, yeah. getting that HP up. And actually, this was a very funny position where at that health, well, at that health, it was unlikely to see Aqua Jet, but the Dugong does know that last priority move. Yes. Does, it's only 40 power instead of the 80 power waterfall so it tends to only do on the realm of like 10 maybe 11 hp yeah i think maximum cases. 13 14 uh, also knows ice shard so has water and ice priority uh coverage moves i suppose uh but not going to see that here hyper potions do take priority over any pokemon move uh, but it was interesting we were mentioning the funny health that iron was at uh, Earthquake tends to do on the realm of around 45 damage. Uh, in that case, it would have put him at, what, like 6, 7 HP? Uh, which is in range of the infamous Faint on the Hitmonlee that you just saw. We have not seen any runners get hit by Faint. There actually is a cash reward for the first person to get Faint. Uh, I believe it's only happened to documented four runners total. That is correct. Uh, and it's happened to Randall three of them, three times. Yeah, I believe Randall, Aspects, Caternese, and Keith, I believe, yeah. are, ran out the four. Keith just got it recently. Um, Faint is a dark priority move. It does like eight to 11 damage or something around there. Um, so it doesn't do much damage, but even at like single digit health, people have just not seen it. And so most people are just like, oh, it doesn't exist for me. Uh, but here's the one controller. Ooh, interesting. I get to fight as we do see a turn one power of love. Getting power of love does save you uh, at least a turn. But right. we are going to give the Wheezy a chance to Thunderbolt us on this turn. So right. we're not completely out of the woods. 
Yeah, Iron must X speed on this turn in order to outspeed the Gengar. Uh, still does have that full restore in the back pocket just in case of a paralyze, but doesn't happen. Able to sweep the rest of Agatha's Mons with ease. I think I saw Kid Rocker getting Stealth Rock from, from Onyx on his side, so no EQ crit into Faint Shenanigans for Kid Rocker either. And even uh, that would have been maybe a, maybe a prayer at that HP. It's just, it's unbelievable that, that Bruno does so little damage to you. But yeah, that's you love you love to see that if you're iron to get that power of love. This is one of those fights where you when you calculate the risk of Agatha, it's actually quite low. It's not quite zero percent, but in most cases you can survive a crunch crit from full health. Um, the only here, issue is if is you get the, crunch crit defense drop, defense drop. and then you're stuck in a heal loop, needing to bring out that second controller to to secure the fight at that point. Yeah, so in most cases, you're like, okay, I've got the second controller in my back pocket just in case, but if you want control of the fight and get the power of love, can be faster than doing the, what we call the full safe strats. The weird thing about safe strats is that they are best when you fully commit to them, every single one. So Agatha, right. Lance, and Champ all combine in succession to the point where you do not have to heal at all out of battle. You would do and, all of your healing in battle and saving every single minute. And when you refer to fully committing, that starts all the way back in Saffron City when you decide what to buy for your final shop. Uh, safe strats will opt to skip X special defense because you won't need that uh, to seeing the Lance or Agatha, Lance and Champ allow you to do that. Also skipping the full restore means that you are full setting those safe strats and committing hardcore to those. Yeah, and they work best by losing the least amount of time on that because it's not it's not as simple as saying I'm gonna do risky up until I know I have a big enough lead and then you do it like halfway. No, if you do safe strats halfway, you actually lose more time than if you would have fully committed to safe strats. Oh no, crit it from Hyper Game on Iron. Hyper oh lead. no. Okay, does still have the rapid ash in the back pocket? Gonna bring it out. Going to revive Starmie. Uh I think this is going to be a recharge turn for the Seedra, so you can definitely go ahead and revive Starmie here, possibly bring out the second controller and swap over to uh, like 2C yeah. strats here, which is a little bit risky considering the fact that Rapidash could go down to like a Hyper Beam or a Hydro Pump, so Iron is going to have to adapt this on the fly. Yeah, this is a little funky because if you just, if you just X special, uh, an attack on this turn, uh, you will not outspeed the Aerodactyl, which will come out next. So I think Iron's doing this correctly. Ooh, gets the Hydro Pump missed. Gets another free turn of setup. So, this, so is, this is fantastic. So Iron should be able to safely set up uh, completely from here. It was a bit risky because if he gets, if the Seizure would have went for Hyper Beam into the Starmie on that turn, it would have been dangerous. But knowing that that Hydro Pump was a bit more likely, it would have been adaptable um, right. with like another X special defense. But um, very, but very good adaptation. Obviously huge. Very huge. Getting that adaptation, Starmie is now currently at plus two speed, outspeeds everything, plus six will be able to one hit everything uh, alongside Rapid Ash's Stomp and probably also going to throw in an extra heal just to not menu before champ now. What's weird about this adapted uh, situation is that the Starmie and the Rapidash are actually in reverse positions right now. Ooh, that's so a good point. To, you have to set up with the first controller, which has a, which doesn't have the back button, and then attack with the second controller, uh, which is the Starmie. It's just very weird. Yeah, it's it will. You have to make a mental note of. Yeah, it will get swapped back for the champ fight because Starmie is still going to be in that first slot regardless. Uh, just a very unique situation for Iron here, having to basically flip his controllers. Also, perfect special attack at 140 is to the point guaranteed on Dragonite. Uh, Kid Rocker also going with one controller strats here. All right, that's one X special attack, Hydro Pump miss. Two X special attacks, Dragon Pulse hits. Or maybe that was already six. I did not pay attention to that. So Psychic's down the line. 
This is going to be a range for Kid Rocker. I did see 134 special attack, I believe, at 52. So there's no way of getting to that magic number 140 for this star. I'm going to pull up those ranges really quick so that way I can announce them. I don't have them memorized, but that's what the notes are for. Weirdly enough, this Gyarados can be a range as well at, I believe, at 127. Uh, you need 132 to guarantee a uh, Psychic. Uh, otherwise, you need to That's you need right. to Thunderbolt. That's 137, which is going to be a 14 and 16 on this Dragonite. 7 and 8 chance, 87.5% to KO with Psychic here. And Kid Rocker not being at full HP means that it is a do or die moment. Even for Kid Rocker, this looks like PB could still be on the line for him. Does get the range. Is, Perfect. All right. Iron starting the champ fight as a two controller fight uh, with the Rapid Ash in testing. Uh, again, like Giovanni, you want to see the Rapid Ash go down to have the fastest version of this fight. It's only about 50 50, though, because you need to get the target, and the Rapid Ash needs to not have like crazy eyes special defense either. Exactly. You want to see Pidgeot air slash into Rapid Ash, not kill it, but leave it just enough HP for Quick Attack to finish it off in the second turn. Doesn't get it, so this is going to be the slow turn, or the slow champ fight, rather, as we'll see a plus four Psychic or Thunderbolt come out from the Starby, uh, right. but should be able to clean this fight up with another X special attack on the next Pokemon, Psychicking and Thunderbolting down the line. And should just, just tap it in. For a win for Iron here. Yes, I think Iron noting in chat that went for the one controller on Lance to try and secure a PB, possibly secure a one, uh, the first pot time. Uh, but will tap in the win, going to secure his advancements to round four, uh, psychics and thunderbolts permitting. As we see, Kid Rocker entering the fight as a one controller. Uh, we'll see how. And this and this could still absolutely PB for Kid Rocker because his yes. PB is a 310. It's like a 310 high. I got the stats pulled up right here. Uh, for Kid Rocker, it's a 310 52, which is absolutely in range. Oh, this is here. so doable. This is so doable for Kid Rocker. So even though it might not be a tournament win, it is absolutely. Ooh, that is very low. Oh, that is. Yeah. As you see, Air Slash could be a three shot. So that means. Uh, probably an extra turn or two of healing here. Another air slash, no crit here. 47, that's a little bit better. Yeah, and, and thankfully... Uh, that. Oh, wait. Whoa. Didn't set up enough. He needed yeah, one more. He's going to have to hyper here. Too. One final hyper remaining. Needs you really to... hope, please do not crit on this turn. Okay, there's a quick attack. You must set up an next special attack here. You're still at plus two. Plus four will all but guarantee it for, for EV version. There we go, there we go, that's great. Uh, you just have oh. to go now. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah hit is, that Thunderbolt. This, that is, this is completely safe. Good call on the Thunderbolt because you don't have enough Psychics. If you would have to go from there, well, you would you would just have to like scald the Marowak, which ugh, if you're, if you're what, <laughs> 32. <laughs> yeah, Trim, we, we don't Trim talk about it, that here. Riv mentioned it to me once and it happened to me immediately afterwards. Yeah. You you must you must scald if you're at 132 special attack or below at plus four, otherwise not guaranteed. But GG's to Iron finishing out the run. Going to be a solid 309 for Iron here. Uh, not quite pot one, but does secure his placement. Uh, what is Iron's current PB, Tpat? Do you have uh, that set pulled up? Yes, I do. Iron's current PB is a 310 41. So I'm pretty sure this this PB is for Iron. Yes, this is going to be in the 309s. This will this will PB by over a minute. Yeah, assuming that looks like we we're going to have a stats. double PB run to finish out round three. Oh, you you love to see it. Uh, Iron now in chat with us. Hello, Iron. Congratulations on your win. Uh, is that a PB for you? No, it's a minute off. A minute off. Okay, so then our yeah. stats have yet to be updated, but still very, very solid time coming out. GZ used to Kid Rocker as well. I'm gonna come out of this with a 310 30 something, it looks like. Yeah, I think it's gonna be just under 310 30. So this will, again, if stats are correct, just going off of SRC um, and anything that may have been updated super recently, we might not have gotten, gotten to it yet, but 
yeah, and what an incredible run for you both. Iron, how are your... Well, what were you thinking of uh, in those late game stages, especially <laughs> one controlling Lance and then getting crits? Like, what was what was the emotions like there in terms of both the PB on the line and the race on the line? Yeah, um, it was definitely. I, I just I just wanted to make it exciting for you guys. That's all. Oh, no. you you um, did. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> <you did. laughs> yeah, I, I I I thought I had still had a bit of a enough of an edge that I was still able to be able to recover from that uh, because obviously it's slow having to set up again but um, and it was super awkward too with Rapid Ash in slot one trying to <laughs> make sure all the X items went in the right spot yeah flipping but, your uh, controller inputs around for sure yeah it was it was yeah it was quite uh, quite interesting there but yeah with without that and I guess also probably without the champ uh, uh, hitting Starmie there uh, that was that was PB pace for sure but I'm happy with the win. Yeah, and speaking of PB pace, Kid Rocker now joining us with a solid finishing time of 3.10.29. That is a PB for you, is that correct, Kid Rocker? Yes, a 23-second PB. Huge. Congratulations congrats, congrats, on that. Kid yeah, and for you, playing just a little bit behind Iron, obviously going for all those risky strats, obviously we were saying here on commentary that it's just like, we can't fault your decision making, but we could probably fault your Starvey's accuracy. So oh, Samuel. Yeah. that's Samuel. I felt that in my bones. Samuel, yeah, I, and I, I also that. missed the pump on uh, on Caroline too. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, the accuracy just two for four for yeah. you. Today. Also, whiffed Kanga, didn't you? Whiff Kanga had to skull. Sorry, him. yeah, it was on Naomi, not Caroline. That I gotcha, whiffed. gotcha. Oh. How are your thoughts on that run? And I mean, aside um, from the late game troubles with the Hydro Pump, what about all the early game stuff and the mid game stuff? Because I mean, this run was so incredibly close. You obviously were on pace the entire time for PB and then some. So I actually was based on my splits behind after Giovanni, just for the fact that I had a bad hideout. The EV death for me there, getting unlucky on Jesse James, really put me behind iron. And uh, all in all, I was playing catch up the entire time after that. And by the time I got to Giovanni and with my bad Koga gym as well, I'm like, I have to pretty much try and risk whatever I could. And then as soon as that uh, Samuel death happens, I message in chat, I'm like, there's no way I catch up. Even if Iron has a death, I'm still so far behind. Yeah, it just, it just slipped away a little bit at the end, but we were raving over how close of a run because we noticed it at Mount Moo, which is obviously early days. But we noticed it after like entering Tunnel and even exiting Tunnel and through Rocket Hideout and into Blaine. It was like, wow, this is close. And yeah, maybe yeah. without that one... I think you tripped up on, what was it, J&J2? What happened there? Was it like a quad target? Was it a crit? Um, so it Evian. was uh, target on Eevee, target on Rhyhorn, poison on Eevee. So I healed the poison, and I got double target on Eevee after that. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, that's why, uh, that's why it's a bit more important in that situation to just heal the damage instead of heal yeah. the poison. Right, because for sure. The, the the poison jab does so much damage on that fight. Yeah, and converse. Oh, no, I'm not upset with the run. I'm more upset with how the run ended. Mm, yeah, because uh, heading out of Giovanni two, I was fifty four seconds ahead. Then Cyprina, I was a minute ahead. And then I, I slowly blood time until after champ, I was twenty three seconds. Yeah, on the flip side, Iron, you had a cracked Pikachu. I was keeping track of your AVs. Four attack AVs on the cycle, three special attack AVs on the cycle with plus special attack. Then that you just, like, you nuked Jesse and James in tower. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah, that was, that was incredible. I was surprised when I saw, like, even with the plus special attack nature, I'm like, I think I was leveling up on bridge somewhere, and my special attack was, like, the same as my attack. It was actually yep. less. And... I was thinking, like, holy sh crap, 
This is actually so good. <laughs> um, I was seriously considering just doing uh, Pika strats on J and J two and doing Helping Hand, mm -hmm. but I, I had a full party and I would have had to take something that needed evolving out in order to put something like Clefairy in, and that just wasn't. I didn't feel like that was worth it. So yeah, I just went totally with the Rhyhorn strats, man. which went really well too. The Rhyhorn got like two KOs in one in one hit, so I can't really complain there. The Rhyhorn seems is very inconsistent too. I've had a lot of cases where it just doesn't kill, where it's paralyzed and it's just horrible. But it went really well there. Oh, I also had a quiet EV, by the way. Yeah, you both had quiet People starters. Quiet. Yeah, we we both were yeah. <laughs> Quiet might be better for one of them than the other. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely better for Pika. I saw the plus special attack nature. I'm like, screw it. I might as well just go with it. See how this goes out. I'm like, my speed isn't terrible. I knew I was for sure resetting the backup if I got my special attack or minus attack for sure. Gotcha. But yeah, see what I mentioned before, like, even, like, even considering that catch counts included between the checkpoints at Moon, Enter Exit Tunnel, Blaine, you were you're both like consistently within thirty seconds of each other all the way up through until Archer Two. Yeah, I I noticed that because I had the stream up and I was checking every so often. I noticed out of Moon that I was somewhat ahead, but also we had very similar catches. Then he caught back up around Tunnel. And then I came back, and it was just a back and forth the whole time. My heart was honestly racing until I got to the archer fight. Yeah, it was it was so close. Like I was I was checking every so often early on. Um, much I was watching much more closely later, but definitely I noticed out of Moon. Um, even I think Vermillion was still pretty close with us as well. There it was a really close race mm. across the board. So. Yeah, I was thinking, wow, well, I got to I got to play out of my mind to, <laughs> to to stay ahead here or stay like in contention. So, yeah, you you played amazing, Kid Roger. And congrats on the PB. That's so huge. I just wish it was bigger. Yeah. I feel that. So say we all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you definitely both should feel very proud and uh, just looking ahead, obviously, uh make sure to, everybody should stay tuned because we are going to do draws right after this. But Iron, since you are moving on <clears throat> and you're in pot three, is there anyone specifically out of pot two and pot one that you want to dodge? That I want to because... dodge. Let me let me pull up the uh... yeah. I don't, I'll, <laughs> the bracket. I'll, re I'll read bracket it so here. that way we can lead into it. Your pot one runners uh, for round four lower are Amber, Etiquette, Ergo, and Triv. Your pot two runners are Dynam. Head Bob, Aspect, and Sandy. And your pot three runners are Fury, Yourself, Iron, Joker, and Spider. Yeah, I don't want to face anybody. <laughs> 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 they're, all, they're, they're all incredible, and they're all so much better than me. So I'm, I'm not expecting to, to win this. Um, I just want to put in a good race and have a lot of fun uh, and, and, and uh, see these top runners duke it out. It's going to be incredible. Um, I mean, you never know. I could, uh, I could improve a little bit, but uh, it's it's a little bit of a little bit of a, a stretch at this point. But these guys, these these folks are all amazing. Uh, but in your defense, too, uh, making it to round four, like that is an achievement in of itself, and you should like don't speak too lowly of yourself. You deserve to be in here with with the rest of us for sure. Your top fifteen oh. minimum, right? Yeah, and yeah, as, as Amber mentioned in chat, yeah, let's. I, I'd, I'd like to face Amber, get a, a little Canadian rematch here. Canadian rematch, fun. eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I mean, all I, all these folks are are incredible. Let's just. I just want to take a look at the pots here. I, if there's a matchup I'd like to have, I don't know. Against the others, I have no idea. <laughs> also, yeah, I got a question. There's some. What there's some, there's the some good potential matchups here for sure. Uh, as for Vermillion, to answer your question, uh, Kid Rocker, uh, Vermillion was uh, just trying to keep up with both of your insane runs um, and obviously probably playing at a level that he wasn't used to. 
Uh, so what happened was his catch count was very low. Oh yeah, uh, leaving uh, uh, leaving Rock Tunnel. His experience was also very low. So it was like it was like that kind of like forced going fast situation, and he was probably sacrificing a little bit more in terms of the exp and the catch total, and it just became a little bit too much to overcome um, around the hideout section. Gotcha. Yeah, um, on, top of, on top of all that was just like the technical the technical issues as well, <laughs> fortunately. Yeah, that's rough. GG's Vermillion. That was you know, GG's. That was just so rough to yeah, the see. Elite. Definitely GG's a valiant effort for sure. Yeah, for GG to you guys as well. You guys played played so well. Sucks that the hydro pump misses that happened at the end. It's unfortunate, Kid Rocker. It is what it is that's Pokemon speedrunning at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah, sometimes the RNG chips fall on your side of the board, and sometimes they don't. Uh, but speaking of RNG, we'll, uh, like Steve had said, uh, we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, going to go into the draw. Do you, any of you have any final shout-outs that you want to have before we get into our restarting stream into draw segment of today? Um... Uh... Just shout out to Etiquette for getting all of this organized and put together, as well as everyone else that's helping. Um, I know that there are people that, that have been talking about this tournament for uh, multiple years, and just the fact that Etiquette's been putting up enough time to get the Discord together, get everyone all set up, and then anyone that's willing to help to also chip in and get this running smoothly, it's just great to see hey i bullied him into doing this <laughs> <laughs> i literally dm'd him i was just like so let's go tournament when and then all of a sudden the discord popped up like that day <laughs> i think we're all the better for it <laughs> yeah i could just thank that yeah, just shout out to tech and uh everybody who's behind the scenes um this is just such a well put together tournament uh it's been it's been amazing to be a part of it and everybody else who's just putting up amazing times and posting them and really giving me motivation to improve my time. It's uh, it's in the game I was planning to come back to, and this tournament really uh, was sort of huge in, in making me work hard and improve my time. So uh, thanks to everybody involved, runners included. Yeah, a shout out to just everyone who's been helping out the tournament and everything. It's been really cool to be part of this thing. I love entering these kind of events. And um, like I said before, a shout out to Fortunate and Gavin for showed me this run of GDQ and getting me excited to play this game. So shout out to them and shout out to you guys for commentating and you guys who played really well today as well. All right, awesome. Yeah. Well, everyone in chat, don't go anywhere. Don't alt that tab. We're going to restart stream and we will be right back with the round four draws. Uh, it's going to be a very hype five matches to go. We'll see you all then.